Giants have about as good a linebacking as anybody in the league, and Bill Walsh thinks that this is the best group of linebackers they have seen all year. What do you think the Giants then will do to uh, the 49ers, rather, to attack? Well, I feel as they're going to have to at least to get 10 to 12 plays out of Paul Hofer. He's hurt, hasn't practiced all week. They need to keep those linebackers on it. All right. Now, the 49ers, of course, they're not known as a great rushing team themselves. Uh, how do you expect them to go against the Giants? Well, they're going to just pick away, use a short game, and try to get the ball to their best people. They're just going to go at them with their strength. Okay. Now, this uh, could come down to a kicking contest because you've got Joe Danello and Ray Wershing both having outstanding seasons. Yeah, Bill Walsh feels that both these guys are quite capable of, of breaking the game open from anywhere on the field, as well as the punting game being uh, a big factor in the winning or losing of the game. All right, they're out there ready to go for the kickoff in a most important contest with the 49ers going for their first divisional title since 1972. The San Francisco 49ers will be kicking it off. Deep for the New York Giants, Leon Bright, number 45, standing just inside the end zone. The Giants to our right in white, the 49ers to our left in red with gold trim. And Wershing will kick it off, number 14. Short kickoff taken by Mike Dennis at the 10-yard line, and what a hit at the 25 by the 49ers. Looked like Dan Buns. The first man to get there, a 17-yard return as we see the Giants starting offensive unit. Scott Bruner for the injured Phil Sims at quarterback. Ike Forte in just his second game as a Giant getting a start. Rob Carpenter at fullback. Johnny Perkins and Mike Freedy will be the wide receivers. Jeff Weston starting ahead of Brad Benson along with Ard, Clack, Turner, and King. Gary Shirk at the tight end. First down for the Giants. Bruner, number 12, brings him out. Flag immediately, complete to Shirk at the 30-yard line, a pickup of five, and a flag down on the first play from scrimmage. Jack Reynolds on the tackle as we see the 49ers defensively. Jim Stuckey and Archie Reese. Lawrence Pillars starting for Dwayne Board at the right defensive end. And the linebackers, Harper, Reynolds, Cookie, and Keena Turner. The outstanding young secondary, Ronnie Lott, Eric Wright, and Carlton Williamson, all rookies, with a veteran at 25, Dwight Hicks wearing number 22. Our referee today is Jerry Markbright, and the infraction is against the New York Giants. Illegal motion, number 81, offense, first down. So illegal motion against the Giants, and it is first and 15. Ball back at the 20-yard line for Scott Bruner in motion behind the ball is Johnny Perkins. Rob Carpenter hit behind the line of scrimmage. Lawrence Pillars, number 65. And he got just to the line of scrimmage. Meanwhile, this final score is in St. Louis defeating New England 27 to 20. And we welcome the viewers who are watching that game. As well as this one, Buffalo over Washington, 21 to 14, and welcome to Candlestick Park, where we are just underway with a second and 15 for the New York Giants at their own 20-yard line. First offensive series, Scott Brunner at quarterback. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer bringing you this action from Candlestick Park on a perfect afternoon for football. Brunner wants to throw, flaring it out to Carpenter. Carpenter is bumped by number 28, Lynn Thomas and forced out of bounds after getting close to the 30 yard line indeed over it they'll spot it at the 32 it will be short of the first down bringing up third and about two 12 yard gain for the Giants and let's make it a long two closer to three yards the Giants need for first down as they now marked it just over the 31 yard line of New York out to the right side, Johnny Perkins to make the strong side right. Carpenter and Forte in the eye formation. Forte, his first carry, short of the first down on third and three. The Giants will have to punt. Tim, you know, this is exactly what the 49ers want to do. 
They want to make, uh, make the Giants keep the ball on the ground and stop them when they do try to run. So Dave Jennings will have the first punt of the afternoon. These New York Giants in pursuit of their first winning season since they were 8-6 in 1972. The 49ers on the verge of, of a division championship. White Hicks and Freddie Solomon by the deep man for the 49ers standing back at their own 20-yard line. Jennings, one of the league's outstanding punters, gets a dandy away. It'll be Hicks right from the 20. Up the middle where he is met by number 52, Joe McLaughlin. And the 49ers will start from their own 34-yard line with this offensive unit. Joe Montana at quarterback. Ricky Patton and Johnny Davis starting ahead of Earl Cooper at fullback. Clark and Solomon, the wide receivers. This offensive line with Audick, Ayers, Quillen, Cross, and Fonhorst, the tight end, is Charlie Young. Joe Montana, what a season he's having. He is number two in the NFC in the rating department at 85.6. And end around at White Clark. But Carson is there to hold out to a gain of about three. White Clark with a little razzle-dazzle early here. The Giants defensively, Curtis McGriff at the left end. Bill Neal, the rookie from Pittsburgh, on the nose. Gary Jeter on the right side. Outstanding linebackers, Van Pelt, Kelly, and Carson. And the rookie from North Carolina, Lawrence Taylor. In the secondary, Haynes and Jackson on the corners. Beasley, Reese, and Bill Currier at safety. Second down and six. Cooper and Patton in the pro set for the 49ers. Up the middle, wide open the tight end. Charlie Young for a first down to the 47-yard line of San Francisco. You know, Tim, one thing that they want to do, you're going to see San Francisco throwing the ball more on first down. They haven't really been able to run the ball a lot, but they're going to see everybody receive the ball today. Charlie Young just came down and went to an open spot, let the defensive uh, linebackers clear out and went underneath. You might see an awful lot of those plays today. All right, Fred, you had a look at Fred Dean on that 49er bench, and that's the man of Freddie Dreyer said the Giants would just soon stay right there on the bench. Yeah, they're on the field defensively. Play action. Montana, lots of time. He's got White, White Clark open. Another 49er first down. Courier and Kelly on the tackle, but the 49ers are in Giants territory at the 39 of New York. A 15-yard gain. You know, uh, 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 Tim, today the 49ers are going to have their hands full. They're going to throw a lot of medium-short passes, but they got to maintain the giant rush. You've got Gary Jeter and Lawrence Taylor right up here at the top of your screen. They got to occupy him. He does a good job of, of holding him. They know Lawrence likes to blitz, and they slide out an offensive lineman to take care of him. They don't want to be able to have a smaller man on him. Fred, indeed, uh, Randy Cross came all the way over from right guard on that play, as you can see in the replay. This is Ricky Patton from Joe Montana. A gain of about three yards over the 35 to the 34-yard line of the New York Giants. Now here's that same play. Now watch Randy Cross come out. And gets the ball over, over to Ricky Patton and, and allows him time to get up the field. Gets his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage to get up and get those yards. Ray Perkins, a Giants coach, trying to get his team into the win column here. They're six and six, trying to move ahead, stay in this wild card hunt. Second and eight. 49ers on the move, complete with White Clark at the 20-yard line of the Giants. Clark finding an open space, and Montana delivering for another Niner first down, a 16-yard game. Clark runs down the field here. He goes inside the coverage and bounces off nicely. You see where he goes right here? Right behind the linebackers. You're going to see an awful lot of this today. They're going to go in front of them just a little bit and also just behind them. That's how Bill Walsh is going to attack their four linebackers today. It was Harry Carson having to come back to make the hit on him, and the Niners on their first offensive series are deep in Giants territory at the 19. Montana throwing on first down. Clark incomplete. White Clark had the ball on his fingertips. Terry Jackson, number 24, on the coverage, and Clark could not hold on. Here's Clark. Now, here's what I mean by going to an area and right in front of the defender. Terry does a good job of getting to him after he initially touches the ball. 
49ers do an excellent job of maintaining a relationship between their receivers and where they want to go and their quarterback. That's what their biggest improvement this year has been. Look at this score. Cincinnati over Cleveland, 41 to 21. The 49ers will play there next week against the Bengals here on CBS. Montana on second and 10. Eludes the rush and throws the ball out of bounds in the general direction of Earl Cooper. Gary Jeter, the heavy Giants rush, making contact just as Montana released the ball. You know, Tim, Gary Jeter is in a mismatch with Dan on it. Dan is actually a guard, but they have to have him out there to play uh, in front of Gary today. So you might see Gary Jeter in, in the play an awful lot this, uh, this week. Out came up from San Diego and won that tackle spot after the schedule starter Ken Bungarder went on injured reserve. Montana hit four in a row before missing on the last two. And actually he only missed on that last one because Clark was unable to hold on to a pass that was there. That one intended for Solomon incomplete a little behind him. And he took a good pop from Beasley Reese just as the ball arrived. And so it brings up fourth down as the Giants tighten with San Francisco knocking on the door and it will bring in Ray Wershing as Bill Walsh. Unhappy that is offensive unit unable to get it in with a major score. Montana will hold for Ray Wershing and just about what we expected Fred uh, field goal kicking time. Yeah I think you're going to see a great deal of this. Bill Walsh knows that both kickers on both teams are quite capable. It's blocked by the Giants picked up by Lawrence Taylor and Taylor Bowls his way upfield over the 30 yard line of the 33. And so the Giants with a big defensive play. A blocked field goal try from Ray Wershing. Looked like it might have been Martin. Let's see. Look at C. Jeter come in there making a hole for his other buddies to come in. The ball went right up the middle. A great timing on the Giants' part. There is rookie linebacker Byron Hunt, number 57, standing in profile to you. He is the young man who made the block here. Watch him in the middle of your screen. There are two Giants who will go up for it here on Wershing's 36-yard try. Right there with a hand extended, batting the ball loose, and then it was Lawrence Taylor who, just as he put his arms up in exultation, was alert enough to pick up the ball, and Freddie likes to carry it, too. So the Giants will start from their own 31 yard line in a scoreless football game. Rob Carpenter, the lone running back. Perkins in motion behind the ball. Carpenter hit behind the line of scrimmage. It was number 78, Archie Reese, the nose tackle, blowing in just as Carpenter got the ball. You see Archie Reese in the gap there? That makes it impossible for the center to block him. The, the 49ers are going to do a lot of that. Hacksaw, number 64, Jack Reynolds, is going to move those front guys around a little bit and put Reese in the gap between the center and the guard. That was an excellent play. Loss of two, Fred. It's back to the 30-yard line, second and 12. Scoreless football game. We have 8.38 remaining in the first period. Loader wants to throw. Flaring it out to Carpenter. He's forced out of bounds by the linebacker, Keena Turner, number 58, after a pickup of about seven yards, maybe eight. They'll spot it at the 38-yard line of New York. And that'll bring up a third and four. Scott Bruner taking over from Phil Sims, who went down with a separated shoulder. Last week against Philadelphia, Bruner was 10 of 27 with two interceptions. But his completions came at key times, keeping Giants drives alive. And they upset the Eagles, 20 to 10. Third down. Complete. Mike Freedy has a first down into 49er territory at the 48-yard line. Mike Freedy cutting in from the sideline. Tim. They expect when any time the 49ers get in a nickel situation, Bruner knows to look inside quick. That's a good relationship between the tight end here, or I should say Freedy and Bruner. They're going to have to look for that a lot because the Niners are going to be coming out of nickel uh, situations. Tina Turner made the hit on Mike Freedy, who's getting a little attention on the sidelines. Freedy, the second-year man from Wyoming, picked up from the Detroit Lions who was drafted the number four in the cutoff last season. First down, New York. In 49er territory, lots of time intercepted on the tip by Dwight Hicks, and Hicks still going at midfield. Hicks has got running room. Bruner, the low man back. Perkins holds him down from behind. Johnny Perkins 
What an effort. But a super play by Dwight Hicks. First down, San Francisco at the Giants' 15-yard line. The ball went off the hands of Tom Mullody, the tight end number 81, right into the arms of Dwight Hicks. You'll see the pass here. It was a little bit high. He should have caught the ball, but the Dwight Hicks is in the more. The important thing here is that he was in the right position to receive the interception. And, and the rest is Dwight Hicks. Take a look at this. The ninth interception of the season for Dwight Hicks. He is second in the NFC in that department. And the 49ers are back knocking at the door. Play action almost picked off by the Giants. It was batted away by Harry Carson, intended for Ricky Patton out of the 49er backfield. Carson, number 53, reading that play exceptionally well. Second down and 10 to go from the 15. What an effort by Perkins, the wide receiver for the Giants. Hicks looked like he had a path to the goal line with only Bruder back there and three blockers to contend with. Perkins caught Hicks from behind. 54-yard play by Hicks. Ricky Patton going straight ahead behind the center Quillen and the left guard Ayers. Picked up about four yards, maybe five. Let's see where they spot it. We see Paul Hofer coming into the game. And here's what we're talking about. Paul Hofer's not coming into the game just to have conversation. <laughs> Look for Paul to either get the ball or maybe a play-action pass down here. Hofer is an excellent receiver as well as a runner. Go for Hofer. The entreaty from the banner here at Candlestick Park, and Montana wants to throw. Blitz from the linebacker. Hofer gets to the five-yard line and has the first down as Fred Dreyer had that one zeroed in. The Giants' Van Pelt blowing in on Montana. Watch Hofer now. He sets up to block. He does a good job of faking the block and now releases when he sees everybody clear out. This is a veteran player who can contribute many, many ways, and that's just one of them. Coming off knee surgery a year ago, he's been playing with a bad knee all season. He hardly practices at all during the week. They just don't want to endanger him, and they also want to give that knee as much rest and healing time as possible. First down and goal for the 49ers. They're in the pro set. Johnny Davis and Amos Lawrence. This is Davis. The former Tampa Bay Buccaneer digs into the three-yard line. Running behind Ayers and Outick. In on the tackle, number 76 for the Giants, Curtis McGriff. Tim, you know, as, as a running back down in this tough territory, you want to make sure you keep behind your blockers and keep the ball tucked away because the fumble down here can really not only turn the ball over, but it breaks your back mentally and spiritually. It is second and goal. The ball is just outside the three-yard line of New York. We are scoreless. First period at Candlestick Park. Play action. Montana for Charlie Young. Superior coverage by Beasley Reese as he saw that one coming all the way and was right there like a blanket on the tight end Charlie Young. Here it is. It's a simple little fake. And down here, a play action pass is really good. It gets everybody coming on. It makes the linebackers commit. This was an excellently thrown ball. The idea was good. It's just they had great defensive uh, play by the Giants. Beasley Reese on Charlie Young brings up third and goal. From the three-yard line, Bill Ring, now make it Lawrence, number 20, with Earl Cooper now, the running backs. This is Lawrence, and he is stopped right at the goal line. Got through the first hit on him, but they mark the ball about one foot from Pater. It'll be fourth down, San Francisco. This is great leg drive. Watch the second effort here. You've got it. He wants to get into the end zone. That's what's great about the 49ers and the Giants this year. Both teams want to win, and they like winning, and they want to get into the end zone. It was Terry Jackson, the man who prevented him from scoring. The 49ers will go for it. Davis is back in number 38 with Lawrence number 20. 49er crowd comes to its feet. Davis is hit standing up, and he scores. Touchdown, Johnny Davis. What a wrap he took, and what a second effort to get over the goal line. The 
49er faithful. Right here is a good line surge. That's the number one thing you have to have. Great defensive charge by the Giants, but Johnny Davis is from Alabama. He's fundamentally sound. He's primarily a blocker, but he can get you the tough yards like he did there. Wershing will come in for the point after that initial hit was by Harry Carson that appeared on the replay, but Davis would not be denied. And Wershing has the point after in the 49ers capitalizing on the 54 yard interception play by Dwight Hicks have taken the lead with 447 to go first period to this score Fred Dreyer the Packers over Minnesota 35 to 23 we welcome the audience who have been watching that game to our game here at Candlestick Park where the 49ers have just scored here in the first period seven to nothing a 54 yard interception by Dwight Hicks leading to a touchdown by this young man Johnny Davis the ex Alabama star and former Tampa Bay Buccaneer Ray Worshing kicks it off the Giants to our right and white San Francisco to our left and red and it is Mike Dennis he has room up the sideline but he slips on the soft turf here and falls down at the 30 yard line of New York let's go back and see that San Francisco touchdown it is Johnny Davis number 38 and Fred what a wrap he takes here by Carson bang and Ooh. still gets in he did but the important thing here the reason he did get in I believe was because of the offensive line getting a good leg drive they all came off as a unit there and you got to be able to do that Fred Dreyer with Tim Ryan here at Candlestick Park a flag on the play number 57 kicking team re-kick an offside on the kicking team will produce another kickoff by the 49ers Fred Quillen or Dan Buns make it number 57 was offside. Meanwhile let's go to New York for an NFL Today report. Thank you Tim and here is the key play from that Packers comeback against the Minnesota Vikings. Dickey pulls out. He's already hit Jefferson for one score. He wants the other wide out this time. James Lofton who juggles hangs on breaks free 43 yards. Three teams now are going to be tied for first in the NFC Central Green Bay Tampa Bay and Detroit back to Tim. What an interesting race in that NFC Central. It seems there's one there every season. And the Green Bay Packers have gotten into the thick of it with a victory over leading Minnesota in the NFC Central. Wershing kicking it off now from the 30 yard line as Dan Buns was offside on the kickoff. It's coming down at the 18 yard line. Taken by Danny Pittman, and Pittman works his way up to the 38 where the ball comes loose. And it may be a 49er ball. Let's see when the whistle blew. It is New York ball. The Giants maintain possession. Right here, you see, it's good breakdown by the Giants. They break down and meet their blockers. There's a little holding going on there, 52, but that's all right. They didn't catch it. <laughs> But right there is a lot of hitting going on here. But this this game is just just underway. But there's an awful lot of impressive hitting going on, and I believe they called the ball dead, which it is. Giants ball. 4:26 remaining first period. The Giants trail seven to nothing. This is Ike Forte. Forte getting wide out the right side, a gain of about seven over the 45-yard line of the New York Giants. Craig Pukey on the tackle, along with Ronnie Lott. A young cornerback from USC who has been standing the NFC on its ear in his rookie season. Bill Welch and Ray Perkins are the coaching combatants here this afternoon. A big game for both of these young coaches. San Diego in front of Denver team to nothing in the first quarter. This is Rob Carpenter. Carpenter has the first down. So the Giants with two runs pick up a quick first down to their own 49 yard line. In our other doubleheader game today the Atlanta Falcons are out in front of the Houston Oilers seven to nothing in the first period. And of course Atlanta still with some hopes of catching San Francisco in the NFC West. Atlanta at six and six. And the San Francisco Niners 49ers are nine and three going for victory number ten here this afternoon. First down, the Giants at the 49-yard line of New York. Scott Bruner at quarterback. Slot formation left. Perkins in the slot. Ernest Gray, number 83, is wide left. Intended for Shirtskin is incomplete. Nearly picked off by Hicks. 
And Gary Shirk slipped. Now, you must bear in mind that the turf here in Candlestick Park is very, very soft and slippery. They've had a lot of rain in this area. Of course, the Giants baseball team uh, completed its season. The infield filled in, and a rock concert also contributed to the soft turf here. You can just see the pass here, Tim. The ball is thrown just a little bit ahead, anticipating the receiver coming in to, to uh, catch the ball to be in that right position. Bruner was throwing to a, a position on the field rather than throwing at the receiver. And Shirk just simply lost his foot. The second and ten. Four ten in motion. Quick release to Shirk. Incomplete. Bruner trying to dump that little throw pass into Gary Shirk. Shirk held up a little bit at the line, and it'll bring up third and ten. Looks like to me a little hyperextension of, uh, of Quinlan's elbow there. He's the center. He has to snap the ball, and that could affect his snaps because he has to have a straight arm to do that. So they're going to put a little bit of adhesive tape on there for him, and hopefully he comes back. Carpenter, the lone running back for the Giants on third and ten. Three wide receivers are in. Runner three of six. Needs one here. Long count by the Giants. That's complete. Mullity, and it looked like he had the first down yardage. He was pushed back from it, but they will spot it for a first down but a down against the New York Giants. Okay, now if you're a Bruner, you're anticipating everything. You see the way he makes the lineman jump? It's an erratic snap count. And if you're playing against Fred Dean and Pillars and these guys, you got to be able to mix up your, your uh, counts. He gets good protection here up the middle on Fred Dean. But I believe there's a holding penalty. 67, offense, third down. Billy Ard, number 67, the left guard, is charged with the holding call. This is Ard's third start. The rookie from Wake Forest has moved ahead of Roy Simmons at left guard. But uh, a miscue there cost the Giants dearly. They had first down yardage. They're now third and long. Ruder throws it out of bounds. Johnny Perkins had double coverage from White and Watt. And the Giants will have to punt. So a tough break for Bruner and the Giants as they had the first down yardage to Mullady, but the holding call brings them into a punting situation. Jennings has punted once for 46 yards and brings into the game a 44.2 yard average, second in the National Conference. He is a pro bowler at his position. Freddie Solomon playing with a very sore knee today, but still back there as the punt returner. Another good punt by Jennings. It'll be Hicks. White Hicks gets it out to the 23-yard line. Byron Hunt on the tackle. And Hicks hoping to get a flag and may have done so. Indeed, he did. Now watch this. Watch the left hand here of Hunt. You can't do that, boys. So the Giants hurt themselves again with another penalty. And the ball will be spotted at the 28-yard line. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, number 57 on the return. First down, timeout. The SMU rookie Byron Hunt picks up the penalty. And so the 49ers will start from their own 28 when we return with 249 remaining first period. Look at Jack Reynolds here. Now, he has been such a great inspiration to the 49ers, not only in his play on the field, but he makes those guys. He drags them into that film room. And what the 49ers have done here, they've, they've improved as a team because they see Jack Reynolds doing it. Former teammate of our Fred Dreyer, of course, with the Rams. First down, San Francisco, play action. Montana having difficulty finding an open man. And Charlie Young makes an unbelievable catch with Carson and Jackson all over him and a late throw from Montana. Charlie Young still came up with a catch. And he looks like he has the first down as well. Tim, right here, there's no secret to where uh, Joe wants to throw the ball. He's just waiting for Charlie to get into the open. And look at Charlie. What a great athlete he is. He's really been an addition to them. And I'll tell you what, he not only can he, is his blocking improved, his receiving, just like it's always been, is excellent. The 49ers rely a great deal on this man. 
A brilliant catch by Young, who is slow to get up. We'll be back in a moment with the 49ers in front. Charlie Young, fortunately for the 49ers, up and off under his own power. What a brilliant catch in traffic here, Fred. Here it is. Joe makes a play to keep the linebackers on us. You see here, Kelly, 55. He doesn't know where to go yet. And look at Charlie. He goes right behind the linebackers and makes a great catch. Back to the live action. It is Ricky Patton going straight ahead for a yard or two at most. Kelly is there, 55. Carson is there, 53. Tim, you know, Charlie has only caught like 27, 28 passes, but two of those catches have won games for the 49ers. Individual play like that all year has helped the 49ers. Everybody is a part of the offense on this team. Nine-year veteran out of USC, acquired last year from the Rams. Two-yard gain brings up second and eight. They're in the pro set with, Rick, with Ricky Patton and Johnny Davis. Solomon in motion. Montana to the short side, Patton. And he is hit by Byron Hunt. And Kelly got in with a real good lick on Patton. And by the way, Hunt in there for Van Pelt, who left the field slowly on the same play in which Charlie Young hurt himself in that traffic after he caught the pass from Montana. So Van Pelt is on the sidelines for the New York Giants. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers and the National Football League is prohibited. No gain on the play. Third and eight, San Francisco. Open up the middle is Patton hit immediately by Mark Haynes short of the first down yardage. It will be fourth down for San Francisco. A hey, Patton just waits for everybody, goes underneath all the coverage, and just goes over to an empty area here. He's running on sight, as they say, right in front of the linebackers, hoping, and once he gets the ball, that the linebackers will miss some tackles and he can get upfield. Time winding down, first period. Tim Ryan and Fred Dreyer at Candlestick Park, and Jim Miller hits his first punt of the day. It's taken at the 18-yard line by Leon Bright. He's got room on the sideline. Bright spun out of bounds after a good return to the 32-yard line of the New York Giants. Bobby Leopold, reserve linebacker, the man to knock him out of bounds, and Ray Perkins had to be pleased with that return. Bright has returned every punt to him so far this season. Up in Canada, where he had played for the BC Lions, of course, he had to return every punt, so Bright likes to run them all back. The wild card picture looks like this. The Giants very much in the thick of it. The Lions with their victory over Kansas City have the best mark and there's a whole bunch of teams who are still in it. Tampa Bay and Atlanta, their games are still underway and we'll be bringing you up to date on their score. Play action, Bruner rolling right. Bruner completes the melody and a Giants first down to the 47 yard line. Linebacker Keena Turner Made sure he went no farther. Pretty play there, Fred. Boy, it was an excellent play. By the way, Charlie Young has a bruised shoulder. He should be back, however. From that last play, what uh, the Giants try to do is to get a misdirection, get the secondary, the linebackers and the secondary people looking and thinking one way by reading their keys. They can see the flow of the main body of the team going to the left, and Bruner comes out and goes to the left and jumps the ball off. All right, so the Giants will have possession when we return to Candlestick to start the second period. The 49ers lead it 7 to nothing. Some of the 49er faithful, 61,000 in all, a sellout at Candlestick Park. They love their 49ers. They always have loved them, but boy, they like them this year. Boy, I tell you, they've waited an awful long time for this thing. They have indeed. It is first down for the Giants as we begin the second period. The Giants to our left and one. Scott Bruner at quarterback on first down. A loose ball recovered by the 49ers. Rob Carpenter looked like he slipped just as he got the ball. You know, that this... hold on. Excuse me, Tim, but you know, you have to have the ball before you can run. And, and if you make a mistake on this field, you're bound, your feet are going to give way. But uh, the game is played on breaks like that. The 49ers need to have breaks, and they're getting them so far today. That was Keena Turner. And when the Giants talk about Lawrence Taylor, the 49ers talk about their young linebacker, Keena Turner, who just came up with a fumble recovery. Well, always a 
significant statistic in the National Football League, and it is here in the early going at Candlestick Park. An interception by Hicks, a fumble recovery by Keena Turner, giving the 49ers first down at the Giants' 41-yard line. We are early in the second period. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer. An important ball game for both these teams, and there is one of the exciting young players in the league. Meanwhile, it is Freddie Solomon taking it as a end around for the 49ers and picking up eight going away from Lawrence Taylor and making a big game. You know, Tim, Freddie is playing with an injured heel. He had a stone bruise up in Los Angeles, and I asked him why he got it, and he said the field in L.A. is so hard that he bruised his heel. That's some comparison to the field they're playing on today. A pickup of close to seven yards for Freddie Solomon. Montana wanted a quick release, and he is dumped by number 77, Bill Neal, the rookie from Pittsburgh. Montana wanted to throw that ball right away. You know, uh, he has to get rid of the ball. If you're going to drop only two or three feet, you better get rid of the ball quick. He didn't see his receiver soon enough, and Bill Neal just sacked him. Well, there may have been good coverage on the outside there coming in, and Montana opted to hold on, and there was Neal with a clear path. So a good defensive play by the... New York Giants drops it back to third and nine at the 40-yard line of the Giants. Giants in their nickel defense now. Montana having to throw on third down. The rush is on. Open man is Charlie Young with another outstanding catch and a first down. And Young hurt himself. It looked like he landed on the ball. Probably knocked the wind out. So he's been hurt twice here after making key catches. You know, it's interesting. Charlie came out of the game with an injured shoulder. It doesn't bother Montana. He's going to go right back for him. Look at him. He sees him crossing the field to the left and gets the ball to him. Charlie will go wherever the ball is thrown, and he landed on the ball that time. He's got an injured shoulder, and now he's out of breath. Another outstanding play by Charlie Young, and the 49ers threaten again. We have a timeout on the field. 13.42 to go in the first half. Charlie Young getting a little ear back that he lost uh, when he landed on that ball, Fred. That's uh, that's really another brilliant catch by Charlie Young, and he's all right. There's Brad Van Pelt, the injured giant, standing next to one of the assistant coaches, number 10 on the sideline, and he is expected back. Meanwhile, the 49ers, Ricky Patton, getting a pickup of about a yard, maybe two, close to the 25-yard line before Harry Carson, number 53, Inside linebacker of the Giants put the stop on him. Young's brilliant catch, keeping the 49er drive alive. And there's Lawrence Taylor, Carson, Jackson, that Giants defensive huddle, and they've done the job here today, even though they're down 7 to nothing. Patton and Cooper are the running backs for San Francisco. And Freddie Solomon in the slot left. Patton in motion. Cooper. Cooper turns the corner and digs down to the 21-yard line where he's met by Mark Haynes, the cornerback, number 36, and Carson, the linebacker, 53. Tim, you're going to see probably Earl Cooper run the ball a little bit more than he will be catching the ball. He's about as good as a uh, receiving fullback as there is in football, but his right hand has a little bit of a splint on his index finger, and it's difficult for him to catch the ball, so you might see him running today. Cooper coming into the game with 221 yards, rushing the second-year man from Rice. Slot formation left on third down. Montana, quarterback, sticks, and he's got running room. Montana gets to the goal line, and will they give it to him? Touchdown. A very late signal by the officials, but it is another San Francisco touchdown. Joe Montana on a quarterback draw. Tim, that is a designated play. You get down inside him. Now watch. Watch as he drops back. He's got every intention of running. He waits for his lineman to get up in front of him. John Ayers does a good job of blocking for him, and the rest is Joe. You know, when you get down inside here, there's a lot of ways of scoring, and this is just one of them. People just don't expect a guy to be that brazen as to run into the end zone from there. 20 yard touchdown run by Montana. Working with a point after. And the 49ers capitalizing on two. Turnovers have scored each time as we see Montana one more time running the quarterback draw and San Francisco leads it 14 to nothing 12 04 remaining first half.
Lions. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have climbed into a three-way tie with Minnesota and Detroit in the NFC Central. It is now 31-14, a minute and a half to play. Back to Tim Ryan and the City by the Bay. We are at Candlestick Park where the 49ers have scored again to lead 14 to nothing here and talking about that NFC Central as we see Joe Montana who just scored again Tampa Bay keeping it very tight with an apparent victory there. The kickoff by Washing was bobbled by Pittman. Pittman however recovers nicely and gets out to the 37 yard line for the New York Giants. Good field position on this drive. Bill Ring made the tackle. Tim, it's very important now for the Giants to get something going. They're, they're behind by two touchdowns. The game is far from being over, but the Giants better start doing something offensively. All right, next weekend on Sports Saturday, Fred, the WBA lightweight championship. Claude Noel defends against Arturo Frias live from Las Vegas. 4.30 Eastern time. And I'll be there with Joe Clancy and then nip over to Cincinnati to join Fred for our San Francisco-Cincinnati Bengals game next week. First down. New York Giants. Bruner wants to throw and it is dropped by Johnny Perkins. The ball a little bit low, but Perkins wide open and an opportunity to get the Giants first down. Tim, the Giants are running two tight ends now. What that does is makes the 49ers uh, secondary, the strong safety, commit to either side of the field, which allows the other side of the field to be open for quick slant passes just like that. Kugler is in at left defensive end for the 49ers. Keith Kugler, Carpenter, the lone running back for the Giants. Mullity, the tight end in motion. Bruner to Carpenter out of the backfield. And he is met by three 49ers, short of the first down at the Giants' 45-yard line, where they will spot it and bring up third and a long two for New York. As he joined us along the way, the Giants blocked field goal by the 49ers on the 49ers opening drive as we see Tampa Bay well in front of New Orleans 31 to 14 and San Diego in front of Denver Denver 14 to 7 Seattle leading Oakland 3 nothing in the second period third down and two for the Giants complete to Perkins Johnny Perkins first down drop the ball and it's picked up by Carlton Williamson. And another Giants turnover has given San Francisco the ball at their own 37-yard line. Perkins made a good play and then dropped the ball. Now you see Bruno looking right at his target, but as soon as he got the ball from center, he looked right to where he was going to throw the ball. Perkins did a good job of getting the ball, but he got to hold on to these footballs. Williamson picking right. up the Giants fumble by Johnny Perkins, the third turnover by New York. The first two led to San Francisco scores, and that was after, as we mentioned earlier, the Giants had made a big defensive play, blocking a Washington field goal. Montana on first down. Keep for Solomon, it's incomplete. Just over, thrown back on the coverage, Beasley Reese. Tim, you notice Freddie Solomon limping a little bit. I asked him in the locker room before the game, I said, Freddie, you're going to play? He says, listen. I want to make some big plays here. I know I can get in the end zone. I've got to be able to play regardless if I'm hurt or not. they got three or four more games left to go. They clinched this division today, and uh, they're in business. But he's a great competitor. He's having a heck of a year for them. Boy, is he ever. Bill Walsh says he ought to be all pro this year. Oakland and Seattle are now tied at three in the second period. Chris Barr has kicked the field goal. Tied up for the Oakland the Raiders. And we have second and ten here. The 49ers after the Perkins fumble recovered by Kyle Williams in the rookie for Pittsburgh. Cooper stumbled a bit. Second effort picks up maybe two to the 40-yard line. Stopped there by Gary Jeter, number 70, ranging over from right defensive end. You know, we said at the beginning of the show that the Giants uh, are going to uh, uh, have to not only make be some big plays, this fellow right here, Gary Jeter, is going to have to make some big plays today. They're behind 14 to nothing. If you're a giant on defense, you're not only thinking about making a tackle, you're thinking about stripping the ball loose. You want to turn over here to get back into the game. They now have two rookies at the outside linebacker spot since Van Pell is yet to return. It's Byron Hunt over there joining Taylor outside. Montana 
intended for Eason Ramson, the reserve tight end, but it is incomplete, and the 49ers will have to punt. Good defensive series for the Giants there. Yeah, they need more of that, Tim. They really do. They're very capable of uh, breaking games open. They're, they're still in the game, and uh, they've made the, the 49ers punt after they had a big turnover. Well, the uh, Giants defense has been doing their job in this football game, but the offense has turned it over three times. So Miller will punt, standing at his own 25. He hits from the 29. Short punt taken by Pittman at the third at the 25-yard line. A flag is down. The ball is loose, and it's picked up by the 49ers, Amos Lawrence, who takes it in for a touchdown. A flag down on the play, however, and the touchdown apparently will not count. Amos Lawrence grabbing the loose ball. Well, watch the ball pop out of here now. That's that's what you want to do as a, as a, as an ongoing uh, uh, coming down the field. You want to take the ball and get it loose. Signal was made. The ball was caught. It's dead. Now, uh, I'll tell you, I don't agree with that. Amos picks it up. He's the fastest guy on the team, and he scores. That should have been a touchdown. Gary Mark right. Danny Pittman here is the receiver I, of the punt. Tim, I cannot believe they're bringing that ball back. That's a that's a touchdown. Well, Fred, when you were talking, the the referee uh, gave his announcement, and I thought, here it is again. Let's hear it from Jerry Markwright. A fair catch signal was made by the receiver. He caught the football. By rule, the ball is dead. He advanced delay of game against the receivers. First down and ten. Well, that explains that. Well, yes, it does. First of all, I didn't see the fair catch signal. I'm not saying he didn't make it. Uh, however, he sure ran with it after he caught it, which Jerry Markwright has just acknowledged. And that's why the confusion here. But a huge break for the Giants, who were about to make their fourth turnover, but it is negated. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome to the fans who are watching this game. Tampa Bay coming from behind to defeat New Orleans 31 to 14 and move to seven and six in the NFC Central. We are at Candlestick Park. Tim Ryan and Fred Dreyer with the 49ers lead the Giants 14 to nothing. A strange play, a strange call has occurred that keeps the Giants the football at their own 17 yard line following the punt return by Pittman. And it is Carpenter hit right at the line of scrimmage got maybe a yard Willie Harper the left side linebacker and Archie Reese the nose tackle making the tackle for the 49ers and they'll call it a gain of about a yard and a half for the Giants now what happened here Fred they said that Danny Pittman signal fair catch we did not see the signal and unfortunately we can't go back far enough but he is running with the ball and looked like he was thinking run all the time. The only thing I can think of is he's trying to shield his eyes and they misrepresented that as a fair catch. Well, he dropped the ball, was recovered for a touchdown by Lawrence, but called back. Bruner is sacked. The initial rush by the linebacker, Pookie, and wrapped up by Pete Kugler, the rookie from Penn State. Tim? They, the, the 49ers are very positive. You see Pookie coming in here. He puts the pressure on and makes Bruder pull the ball down and run right smack into his old buddy over here, his teammate, for, for a sack. They think they can sack these guys today. They want to get him to throw the football, let these guys have some work. Well, that's the first sack of the afternoon by the 49ers. 28 so far this season. Carpenter, the lone running back, number 26. The Giants now third and 15, back up to their own 14-yard line. Bruder has time. Up the middle, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Gary Shirk. Coverage on him by Williamson and Thomas. And so New York will have to punt. And the 49er defense, excellent all season, proves to be so again. Jennings in to punt for the New York Giants. You know, Tim, every team has good kicking. But these guys here, Jennings, and uh, uh, Danello can really change games around for you. This guy's an excellent punter. He's also a great athlete. Does very well in those all-star super. Jennings gets the punt away. It comes down at the 45 of San Francisco. Solomon trying to get wide, and he does. Now knocked out of bounds at the Giants. 
47 yard line by Byron Hunt. We have 827 remaining in the first half here at Candlestick Park where the San Francisco 49ers capitalizing on the turnovers lead at 14 to nothing. The preceding message was furnished by the National Football League. There's the turf now. Van Pelt is out. However, he's got a groin due to the fact that this turf is so loose that he keeps all his groin, so he won't be back. He will not return today, and Dwight Clark is going to throw the ball, and it's incomplete. Well, we knew Freddie Solomon could make that play. He's a former quarterback. But Dwight Clark not noted as a passer, the young receiver from Clemson. This is, this is a good thinking down here. You got the ball in midfield. You might as well go ahead. Oh, there, Fetty falls down again. The turf is bad for everybody, but that type of thinking is good down here. You want to get the defense uh, uh, thinking that you'll score from any type of formation. The 49ers have the ball game going their way now. Solomon was the intended receiver. You saw him slip on this very soft turf. It is second and ten. Joe Montana, who has rushed for a touchdown, under some pressure, finds an open man at Dwight Clark. First down, 49ers to the 30 to make it the 29-yard line of the New York Giants. Tim, Bill Walsh said the best thing that, that, that uh, Joe Montana does is after he gets in trouble like this, he always seems to come out of it. He does a good job. He's not trying to scramble to get out. He just wants to get enough time to scramble out and see where his receivers are, and he has a great, great ability to do that. We're down to 7.47 remaining in this first half at Candlestick Park. Coming up at halftime, Brandon Irv will have scores and highlights of today's NFL action. Amos Lawrence has the ball for Montana and is hit behind the line of scrimmage. It is Brian Kelly, the linebacker, number 55, coming in on the left side to nail Lawrence before he could get started. Tim, you know... Amos is only 175, 179 pounds. You're not going to run him up into the line, but I think what you might see is they're setting him up, perhaps, to come out of the backfield as a receiver. Lawrence acquired from San Diego in a deal earlier this season. He was the third pick of the San Diego Chargers, but never went to their camp. The 49ers would like him to become their speed back. And the rookie has shown that he can move it. Montana on second and 14 is complete to Dwight Clark. Clark away from the first man, Kelly, but is dropped by Terry Jackson short of the first down at the Giants' 29-yard line. 6.38 to go in this first half. Two turnovers by the Giants, setting up 49er scores. Johnny Davis going in from one yard out after Dwight Hicks had returned an interception 54 yards to the Giants' 15. And Keena Turner recovering a Rob Carpenter fumble at the Giants 41. Joe Montana on a 20-yard quarterback draw scored for San Francisco. And they're in Giants territory now with third down at the 29. Johnny Davis is stuck. Brian Kelly and Harry Carson, the inside linebackers, combining on the hit. Gary Jeter there with them. Very little game, maybe a yard. Tim, the Giants do an excellent job. Neil, Jeter, George Martin, they do a great job of controlling the man in front of them and keeping the line of scrimmage there. That's very, very important. The Eagles could not run against them last week, and that's what beat the Eagles. The 49ers are finding out that these guys up front for the Giants are very, very good football players. 49ers are going to go for it on fourth and three. And the Giants, 27, go running back Cooper. Montana out to Cooper wide open. He has the first down as he's hit by Mark Haynes. And how about that? Tim, they're very, very confident that they can do anything they want to do, especially out of the passing game. Joe just comes back here and look, see his head? It goes downfield for a minute, and then it comes right back over here to drop the ball off. He waits for the coverage to set itself, and then he looks for his receivers within the framework of that defense. Montana is now 11 of, of 18 on the day, and he keeps this 49er drive alive as they are now at the Giants' 22-yard line and threatening once more. Wide to the left is Solomon. Cooper and Lawrence, the running back. They give it to Lawrence. What a defensive play by Lawrence. 
Taylor, a brilliant rookie from North Carolina, diving in to pull him down at the 25. There'll be a loss on the play. Now to the left of your screen, watch. Here's uh, here's C. C. Lawrence Taylor here, 56. What he does is he plays well off of blocks and then waits for the ball carry to get to him and has the acceleration to come inside out to get to the receiver. He's going to be a great, great football player. Lawrence Taylor and Ronnie Lott of the 49ers, certainly the two leading contenders for defensive rookie of the year. Second and 12. Montana lots of time. Deep sideline, incomplete. Freddie Solomon with good coverage by Haynes. Solomon slipping, but Haynes was all over him. Atlanta leading Houston 10 to nothing in the second period. And the Falcons, of course, trying to get to seven and six. Seattle has moved in front of Oakland 10 to three. Atlanta and Tampa Bay next week. There's another big one on CBS because both those teams in that wild card hunt along with the New York Giants. Perkins and Waltz coaches here today. Watching this one. Lawrence is flattened by his own man, Dan Aldick, after he caught the pass from Montana. This game's tough enough getting hit by the defensive players, Fred. <laughs> well, Joe just dumps the ball off to, to, uh, to uh, Lawrence over here. He's got a lot of speed. We said earlier he came in the ball, he came into the game as a receiver, uh, as a runner, and now they're gonna start throwing the ball to him. And uh, he just fell down and ran to his own guy, that's all. Dan out it gets credit for the tackle and I'm sure they'll have some fun when they look at the films next week. Fourth down field goal try for the 30 a 40 yard attempt by Ray Worshing. Hits the upright. Ray Worshing who was on a streak. Of eight in a row. Has it stopped at nine. It's very important you get it. It's a, this field is very difficult to get your footing on, so I'm sure that the kickers are thinking about that, too. He just shaded it just a little bit far too far to the right. And we don't want to forget the Giants' block of Worshing's first attempt today, by the way. Yeah, you saw him right there as he met the ball. He slipped a little bit, and I'm sure that's what probably threw him off. We saw Byron Hunt block his first effort back on the first offensive series of San Francisco. So he came into the game with eight in a row, and that has been stopped. The Giants. Carpenter and Ike Forte, the running backs. Bruner on first down. Oh, Ernest Gray. Gray gets away from Ronnie Lott and is forced out at the 48 yard line of San Francisco by Dwight Hicks. Good play by Ernest Gray. Okay, Gray goes down the field. He's watching where he's going. He stops short right into the open area to catch the ball and this is what you want to happen this is what they hope happens a guy misses the tackle and he takes the sideline up the field that was just meant to get some yardage but it turned out to be a lot of yardage well, Ronnie Lott has not made too many errors in his rookie season he was there with Gray but Gray got away from him first down Giants at the 49 yard line San Francisco Perkins in motion play action Bruner for Gray, a diving catch by Gray, and another Giants first down. 3.35 remaining in this first half. Now, Tim, Bruner drops back, and you see his head. He looks right to where he's going to throw. They're not trying to fool anybody. They're just hoping the guy runs down the field and turns out before the coverage gets to him. It's a well-timed play, and they're successfully uh, doing it so far. Ernest Gray, a lot of fans are really pulling for this guy because he's had his problems this year. He's dropped a lot of easy ones and made a number of circus catches. Now he's hit two big ones in a row. Bruner, deep, intended for Gray again and overthrown. The coverage deep by Eric Wright, number 21, the rookie from Missouri, their number three pick, playing that right corner. The Giants, if they could get on the scoreboard with a touchdown here, would make this a most interesting second half. 3.02 to go. And with the 49ers missing the field goal try, they lead 14 to nothing. A Giants touchdown certainly close it up nicely for the second half. Ronnie Lott, what a season he is having. The rookie from USC, six interceptions, 67 tackles. Three of those interceptions returned for touchdown. Bruner intended for Carpenter. He could not hold on, but Keenan Turner was right there with him. It is unlikely Carpenter would have had more than a yard on the play. Now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York and find out what else is happening. 
just happened down in Houston. The snake has the Oilers on the board, and he'll go to that rookie from Morgan State. Mike Holston, 15 yards. They missed the extra point, so they trail Atlanta by four right now. 10-6. Back to you in San Francisco. Oh, boy. 10-6 as the Oilers are back in it. It is third and 10 here, a big play for the New York Giants. Bruner has the time. His pass is overthrown, intended for Freedy. And that was a big play for the New York Giants to try and get on the scoreboard here before this first half comes to a close. 2.53 remains. You know, uh, the coach told us before the game that Bruner and uh, Sims are, are somewhat similar. They're not afraid to let Bruner do the same things that Sims are. Sims uh, is, a, is a rifle arm quarterback, and Bruner is also very capable. They're not going to change their offensive game plan because uh, they have a change of quarterback. Uh, Bruner unable to get it to Freedy, and that brings up this fourth down situation for Jennings, hitting it from midfield. Angling for the corner, and he has done it quite nicely. They'll mark it at the eight-yard line, and so with 2.45 to go, Jennings punt to the corner gives the Giants defense an opportunity to get the ball back. The ball is marked exactly now at the seven yard line and a good effort by Jennings. Congratulations from Burton along the sideline. You know Tim those are the, that's one of the things is a good example of one of the things that Bill Walsh was talking about. He, this guy here Jennings can do that to you. Now the Giants could could be even. They could be ahead. But they happen to be behind. He's very capable of putting you in a hole. And if the Giants get a big turnover here on defense, they're back in the game. Well, you saw some happy 49er faithful here. What a season they've been enjoying from the San Francisco team and the hometown team leading 14 to nothing. Montana brings them out from their own seven. It's Johnny Davis off tackle to the right side, and the Giants stack them up after a gain of. Maybe uh, two yards with a little uh, luck from the spot. They spot it at the nine. It'll be second and eight. Byron Hunt still in there for Van Pelt made the tackle along with Curtis McGriff. Left defensive end number 76. Second and eight for the 49ers. 219 on the clock, first half. Shadows starting to creep across the turf here at Candlestick Park. Giants have called a timeout. First charge timeout, Giants. Very Mark Bright announcing it to the crowd of 61,000 here at Candlestick. And out comes the turf repair crew. We can just see that downfield. There they are. I thought for a moment we had a horde of disorderly fans it looked like coming a, out onto the field, but they're working here today. It looked like Shea Stadium, 1969. <laughs> You know, the last time I saw this, I don't go to too many polo matches, but a tradition at a polo match is at halftime or whatever those are, the middle of the chucker or whatever happens out there, Fred, all of the people come out on the field and uh, do this, tamp down the turf so the ponies can get going again in the next chucker. Isn't that interesting? Not necessarily. Let's return to New York and Brent Musburger for an NFL Today report. Tim, that Mick Jagger can really cut up a field, can he? Meanwhile, Bartkowski is cutting up Houston. Big play Jackson is about to get loose right now. This will be a 43-yard scoring strike. It is now 17-6 Atlanta over Houston. You better send Freddie downstairs to work on that grass. Back to San Francisco. All right, Brent, how about that? Alfred Jackson, he is Mr. Excitement in that Atlanta pass attack. And those Falcons, a good football team that really should have a better record than they have so far this season, but they're still rightfully thinking playoff as are the Giants as certainly are the 49ers who lead 14 to nothing here. Tim Ryan and Fred Dreyer at Candlestick Park. Second and eight. Johnny Davis running behind Quillen and Cross and stacked up by a horde of Giants tacklers led by Gary Jeter followed by Carson and Lawrence Taylor getting on getting in on it as well. Third down and four for the 49ers. And Cincinnati continues to roll. 41 to 21 over the Browns today. Next week they will host these San Francisco 49ers. And that matchup should be one of the exciting games of the entire NFL season. Also on CBS, the Rams at the Giants. Atlanta, Tampa Bay, Philadelphia, Washington. Each one of those games very important to the playoff picture.
Minnesota at Chicago, Detroit at Green Bay, Dallas at Baltimore. Check the local listings for the game and time in your area, and it's all preceded by the NFL today. Of course, Ray Walsh, this man, will be having a homecoming of sorts. Fred, you and I will be down there at Cincinnati with, with Bill Walsh uh, going back there to uh, the town where he had been an assistant coach of the Bengals. Yeah, he's uh, he's been everywhere, Cincinnati and San Diego, and now he's in San Francisco. You know, he's he's got disciples all over the league. He's very very smart man, very pleasant man. He's treated us very kindly the, this last couple of days, and uh, it'll be interesting. That could be a Super Bowl matchup right there. Ray Perkins, who apparently has turned the Giants' fortunes around, even though the team is just six and six, you can see that they're headed in the right direction. Fred, you're an old Giants. You were there. Good days and bad. Uh, what are your feelings about the way they're headed? I think it's I think it's really encouraging that not only everybody's doing real well this year, but the Giants especially. They haven't had a winning season since 1972, and uh, I really pull them for them. I hope they do real well this year. All right. Play is underway with two minutes remaining here in the first half. Third down and four. Montana with Jeter applying the heat, and he gets away from it. The pass intended out the left side for Solomon is incomplete. But Montana did a good job to elude the rush of Gary Jeter. One of the things we said earlier is Montana's ability. Now you see Lawrence Taylor here. He gets met by a big guard coming out here. That's Ayers. And then he, the rest of it is all Joe Montana. <laughs> Jeter thought he had a sack, but the ball is just a little bit under film. That's just a great athlete's reaction. Fourth down to San Francisco. Miller standing at his goal line. And there is ample time for New York to do some business here. 153 on the clock. Leon Bright awaits the punt. A short punt. Bright from the 48 of San Francisco to the 40-yard line, where he is met by three red shirts. The first one was number 59, Willie Harper. And so the Giants, Freddie, are in good field position here at the 40-yard line with lots of time left, 145. Well, 14 points is a lot of points if you've got them, but if, uh, or if you don't have them. But, you know, uh, it's not an insurmountable amount of points to get, especially if you're the Giants and you got the ball on the 40-yard line. Coming up at halftime, Brendan Irv with scores and highlights of today's NFL action. Lots of interesting and exciting games around the league. The Giants would very much like to come up with seven points on this drive. In the I formation, Bruno the quarterback, Perkins right, flared out to Ike Forte by himself. He's forced out of bounds by number 21, Eric Wright, at the 38-yard line for a gain of two. Now they're going to give him the 35-yard line. So that uh, looked, turned, looked like it turned out better than we thought, and it'll be a gain of five for the Giants. 137 to go. Ray Perkins getting the word from upstairs. The Giants offensive coaches. Second and five at the 35. Wide left goes Gray. Mullady makes the strong side right. In motion is Bright. Bruner with time incomplete. Intended for Mullady. Third down. Now for another NFL Today report, let's join Brent Musburger again in New York. Tim, this is not a replay. This is the other Alfred. This one, Jenkins from Bartkowski. Another 43-yard bomb, and suddenly it's 24-6 Atlanta. Back to you in San Francisco. All right. What an exciting football game, Atlanta and Houston. You know, that's not unlike those two teams. They both got quarterbacks who can put it up. Third down here. Bruner's got to make it happen. Perkins in motion behind the ball. Up the middle. Nearly picked off. Intended for Mullady. It was Lynn Thomas, the Pittsburgh rookie. Nearly intercepting. It's fourth down. Bruner drops back here and looks right to where he wants to throw the ball. He just want, he's not trying to fool anybody, but he, he didn't see the backside of the coverage coming over. And Lynn Thomas does a good job of reacting to the football once it's been thrown. We've got an injured 49er being assisted off at his number 76, Wayne Board, the defensive end, who was in on the rush and is being helped to the 49er sideline. Joe Danello has come in to try the field goal. Jim, they cannot afford to lose to Wayne Board. He's their best lineman. Forty-niners have called a timeout. 
And that'll give Joe Donello time to think about it. He's a veteran. I don't think there'll be any uh, concern on his part having a little extra time to get ready. And Donello, like Worshing, is having an outstanding season as a kicker. He has 18 of 26 field goals, including a 55 yarder earlier in the season. He had 12 in a row before that streak was stopped, including six out of six against Seattle. You know, Tim, he, Joe just sat over and watched uh, the 49ers. Ray Worshing missed a field goal, so he's very well, well aware of the turf conditions. They're spotting it at the 42-yard line, actually closer to the 43, so this will be nearly a 53-yard attempt. Through the hole. Good boot. And it's good. A 53-yard field goal by Joe Danello. And so the Giants, while they did not get the major score, now with 124 left, are back in this football game with Joe Danello's 53-yard field goal, making the score the 49ers 14 and the Giants 3. This is what Joe, uh, uh, Coach Walsh was talking about. Good footing, balls through, the ball is up, and it's good. You know, if, he, if the, uh, the Giants have just shown the 49ers that they can score from 50 yards out, now that means something to Walsh. He knows that the two kickers the Giants have, Danello and Dave Jennings, can change the game around. The Giants are in the game. Danello has tried six field goals this season from 50 yards or more coming into the game. So he is now three for seven from that distance. How about that? And he had 80 points coming into this football game. What a season he's having. One twenty-four on the clock. Danello ready to kick it off for the Giants. Amos Lawrence is back deep with Bill Ring. High, high kickoff and a dandy through the end zone by Joe Danello. So San Francisco will start from their own 20-yard line. One twenty-four showing on the clock here in the first half. Shadows lengthening it. Candlestick Park on a perfect afternoon. Temperatures in the 60s. They've had a lot of rain in the Bay Area this past month, but it came out to shine today. That sun did for the 49ers. Ooh, Tim, look what we got down there. Some pretty young ladies getting ready for the halftime show. 61,000 on hand here at Candlestick. Slot formation left Solomon in the slot. Joe Montana. Leading the offense for San Francisco. Screen pass. Little player screen out to Cooper. And Cooper is hit at the 20-yard line near the line, of, right at the line of scrimmage, as it turns out, by Mark Haynes, the quarterback. And a good effort by Bill Neal, the nose man, going out there. You know, we said earlier that you may not see him catching a lot of balls today, but he's going to try and catch him regardless of that split. Very little gain on the play. They try the same thing the other way to Pat. Better blocking this time, and Patton gets out close to the 30-yard line. Depending on the spot, it would appear to be short of the first down. Harry Carson put a real good lick on Ricky Patton and Lawrence Taylor, as you might expect out that side, was right there with the veteran Carson. There's Lawrence Taylor doing a little bit of intimidating himself. You know, he's a rookie player, but he plays like he's he's been around five or six years. These guys uh, come out of college. It's very, very, uh, it's very uh, difficult to say that uh, looking from up here that the guy is a rookie. He plays like a veteran. Look at him trying to pull the ball loose. He's letting these people know. He's letting the 49ers know that you run my way, I'm going to be there on you every play. Another 49er timeout with 49 seconds on the clock. They've got one remaining in this half. The ball is at their own 30-yard line. That field goal by Danello, well, obviously it isn't as attractive as a touchdown. It certainly has put the Giants very much into this game because their defense has played exceptionally well through this first 30 minutes of play. The two San Francisco touchdowns came following turnovers by the Giants' offense. You know, Tim, it's one thing to go into games and realize there's going to be a winner and a loser. It just takes a lot out of the team to lose the game by giving the ball away to the other teams. Solomon goes limping out to the right side. He's been playing hurt right from the opening kickoff. Johnny Davis bowls his way straight ahead and gets the first down yardage for San Francisco. In the hurry up with 35 seconds on the clock. Pat trying to get wide right. Again, good defensive work. 
Courier, number 29, and Haynes, number 36, forcing him out of bounds after a gain of only two. Tim, you know, the 49ers here just aren't, like, giving up. What they're doing is they've made their decisions to make their adjustments at halftime. What they're doing now, just running the ball out to get it out so they can kick the ball and let the Giants have it deep in their tour and run the clock out. They're going to they're gonna make their, their adjustments at, this, in, at halftime and come back, and we might see a lot of different things from the 49ers. The clock stopped with Patton getting out of bounds. 27 seconds remain. Second and eight from the 35. The Giants have lost Brad Van Pelt to a groin injury for the remainder of the game. The 49ers wing forward left to the bruised knee. Montana wants to throw. He's forced out and gets to the sidelines with Byron Hunt in pursuit. 20 seconds left. As Montana got near the 40-yard line, they're going to mark it at the 39. Montana came into this game with a rushing mark of 45 yards on 18 carries. He added 20 yards on the touchdown run early in this second period. And he picks up a few more there. Third down, San Francisco at their own 39. That's timeouts remaining. Well, uh, Montana's got to get it up the field here. And then he'd have an opportunity with one more timeout something happen. Third and a long four. Flair to Davis. Haynes on the coverage. Maybe a loss on the play. It'll bring up fourth down in any event. And they'll mark it as no gain. So good defensive work again by the Giants defense. And the 49ers will have to punt it away with 14 seconds on the clock. Jim Miller comes in. Miller, like Jennings, having an outstanding season punting. Number six in the NFC. And there is the receiver, Leon Wright. Has yet to make a fair catch this season for the Giants. He likes to run them back. They have a good rush on. Excellent rush. Short punt taken by Wright at the 28 and he's hit immediately by Amos Lawrence. No flags down where Jim Miller was hoping he might get a roughing the kicker call. Here's another look at it. Well, I tell you, I don't know. I... Nah, he was faking. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> Diving attempt by Mark Haynes to block it and he rolled into the kicker Miller after the punt had gone and of course, as you said, Miller was going to make sure that he took a little dying score on it. So we have six seconds remaining in this first half. The Giants with the ball at their own 28-yard line. Carpenter and Forte, the running back. Doesn't look like they're planning on passing. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> so Bruner uses up that six seconds. And the San Francisco 49ers on the strength of two turnovers. An interception by Dwight Hicks, a fumble recovery by Keena Turner, turning them both into major scores. A field goal by Joe Danello of the Giants, and so we stand at halftime with this game a long way from being over, the way the Giants' defense is playing. The 49ers 14, the New York Giants 3 will be returning to Candlestick Park in San Francisco in just a moment. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer with a very live crowd at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, 61,000 strong. Their 49ers lead it, 14 to three as we begin the second half. Joe Danello kicks it off high and deep. Amos Lawrence from the two. Lawrence over the 25 to the 28, a flag down on the play. Joe McLaughlin, reserve linebacker number 52, made the tackle. Fred, as we get the call, it is a clip signal against the 49ers. Jerry Markwright, the referee, making the ruling. Interesting stats from that first half show the Giants with only three yards rushing. The 49ers, 65, a modest amount, but three certainly does not follow what you were talking about the Giants needed to get from Rob Carpenter in particular. Personal foul. Clipping number 85 on the run back. First down. You know, those two stats should be inverted. The 49ers are the ones with running problems. 
with Rob Carpenter, they should have a more yardage than they do. Mike Wilson charged with clipping, so the 49ers start from their own 13. Play action. Montana forced out and dumped by Gary Jeter. Jeter eluding the block of number 61, Dan Attic, and making the defensive play. And the Giants defensively were very sound in the first half, as we pointed out, holding the 49ers to 65 yards rushing. Montana was 16 for 26 for 114 yards. Here you see Gary Jeter getting double teamed here. Now he just gets pushed into a sack. Very fortunate thing that an off the defensive end likes to see happen every once in a while. It was Ayers and Attic on the left side of the 49er offensive line. Ricky Patton. Loose ball. Martin came up with it, but it is apparently marked down and will continue to be the 49er football. Johnny Davis got about a yard on the play. Maybe two. Well, now they mark it back still behind the line of scrimmage. So he got only about a yard. You can see he was down here when the ball came out. He was he was on the ground when the ball popped out. That's a good call. It is third down. And 11 for the 49ers. Patton and Davis, the running backs. Montana completes it. White Clark. Clark has the first down for San Francisco. Beasley Reese on the coverage made the tackle. 13-yard gain. Good job of, of, of looking and waiting for the receiver to get in the open and hit him. That's a good, good combination to pass right here. You know, Clark is, is the MVP as far as uh, Bill Walsh is concerned. He's the MVP of their team. He's just having such a great year. He makes things happen. Big catches like that keeps drives going. The Niners have got to establish their offense now. They just can't sit back on 14 points. Clark and Solomon, the best pair of receivers in the National Football Conference thus far this season. Play action again, Montana, incomplete. Intended for Freddie Solomon, who took a real lick from Mark Haynes just as the ball arrived. Tim, Mark Haynes is their best tackler back there, and that play was really a good example of that. Look at the worst position, his head and his shoulders. That's an excellent tackle. He didn't use his helmet, he used his shoulders. And I'll tell you, that, um, that much area on your shoulder hitting you on the back like that can really affect you the next time you go out to catch a ball on Mark Haynes. Scott Bruner, in comparison to Montana, that first half, 9 out of 20. They need some offense if the Giants can get the ball in a hurry here. Paul Hofer gets it out to the 29-yard line for the 49ers. I'm wondering if you'll see more of Hope for the second half. I think that they might. They got 65 rush yards rushing on the Giants so far. I bet you see a little bit more Hope in the backfield, especially running the ball, and perhaps, like we said earlier, he can catch the ball also. Third and seven for San Francisco. Brad Van Pelt, if you join us along the way, not in the Giants' defense, injured early in the second period, and is not slated to return. A groin injury. Byron Hunt, his replacement. Montana under pressure is sacked by Bill Neal. Number 77, the rookie from Pittsburgh, rushing up the middle, right with him, Gary Jeter, number 70. So again, the Giants defense, Fred, doing the job. Yeah, you know, Bill Neal has been a real good surprise for them this year. He's played the nose very well, and he's also a big guy. He's about uh, 260 pounds. He puts a lot of pressure in there on the quarterback, and he's played very well for them over the last couple of weeks. Miller standing at his own six-yard line. Barefooted punter. Gets it away to Bright. The Giants 45, and he is hit immediately. First man there, number 28, was Lynn Thomas. And the Giants with pretty good field position here as they have their first offensive series of the second half coming up, 11.46 to play in the third quarter. All right, the 49ers leading 14 to 3, and uh, some strategy discussions by Joe Montana after that Thanks. offensive series. It's helped with the early message of the guard. Because it's tough for the guard. The guard's getting the man. But what's happening is now there's nobody to help his man. And that's what's happening. He wants the pullback uh, yeah. to stay yeah. in. The guy knows. All right, the Giants on first down. Rob Carpenter, uh, who was 
really struggling in the first half trying to find any room to run wound up with minus four yards on five carries he opens well here in this third period with close to a 10 yard gain it'll be second and less than a yard to go sounded like Montana wanted some more blocking help there from his fullback yeah his his backside's giving a lot of pressure and he wants uh, somebody to help Dan on it Carpenter has a first down the flag is down however as Carpenter got into the 38 yard line and again the Giants uh, with another miscue a holding penalty against the New York team and when they had a good drive going early in the first quarter it was a penalty that resulted in uh, the loss of a first down play with Bruner coming up with a good first down pass and a holding penalty wiping it out and they are stung again here. Holding number 67 offense second down. That is Billy Yard and he was the culprit on the last key play the rookie from Wake Forest. Look at the right side he's coming out now this is first start in a while he he just grabbed oh, look at him he's a big guy and he's just going to come right out and hold you that's all he's going to do and he gets caught that happens. So the Giants are back to second and 11 out of the eye formation from their own 45 a short Jim Miller punt gave them a pretty good field position. That is Ike Forte, and he gets just over the line of scrimmage before he's knocked down. Lawrence Pillars and Stuckey. Pillars forcing the play. Looked like he might have got a hand on him, and then Jim Stuckey meeting him right at the line. So it is third down. And the Giants offensively still trying to get something moving. Tim, Dwayne Board's back in the game. He left with a little bit of a, a knee problem. He's back now. That's good to see. They've got Fred Dean in on third down. Forte reversed to Perkins. They got a lot of blockers. Perkins running hard, and it is Fred Dean who catches up with him, but it is very close to first down yardage. Now watch Fred Dean. He, he looks, he sees. He takes off, but you know something? Somebody has to stay back and watch for the reverse. But here's what makes him a great player. Look at the angle he takes and the pursuit getting back to his original responsibility. That's why they got him here. He's a great football player. First down for the New York Giants. Good work by Perkins. Good recovery by Fred Dean to hold it to the 10-yard gain. But the Giants are at the San Francisco 45 trailing 14 to 3 with 10 15 to go in the third period. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer at Candlestick Park. Shadows now covering much of the field. Carpenter good hole off tackle left and he pulls his way over to 40 to the 37 yard line of San Francisco. Archie Reese on the tackle number 78. Tim the Giants are now starting to do what they wanted to do at the beginning of the game. They want to run this guy more and the Niners now are starting to let him do it. They can't do that. They've got to get tougher and they have to take the, the ball away from the Giants now. The Giants are now starting to show you what they can do. 49er player is down. Creating a momentary delay here with the Giants having a second and a long two when we return to Candlestick with 9.52 remaining in the third period. There's Dan and Ellen Fields. He's editor of our local newspaper. He looks worried about his problem dandruff. I wish he'd ask me. Mr. Owens, what shampoo should Dan use for his problem dandruff? Ellen, how about Tegrin? It works on itching and flaking? In a national survey, three out of four dermatologists judge Tegrin's medication effective in fighting even problem dandruff. Let's try it out. Oh, how's Dan's problem dandruff? Tegrin's terrific news, Mr. Owens. Prove it to yourself, Tegrin. Well, well, Rob Carpenter didn't do a whole lot in the first half, but Fred, you, you pointed out they've, they've got him going here in the second half. You know, they have half times for people to go in and, and talk about the things they have to do. They're going to come back to Rob Carpenter. I wouldn't be surprised to hit the big second half. Looks like he's carrying his wallet in his hip pocket there, all that money he got coming over from Houston. <laughs> second and two for the Giants. Mike Forte, big hole, and he has the first down. He slipped. A flag is down. Forte would have had some more, but he slipped on that loose turf. And another holding call against New York. Fred, you can't have holding calls on running plays. Bad enough on the pass. Well, what's uh, too bad here is the Giants got to get back into the game. 
And the only way they can do that is to play air-free football and no mistakes and no penalties. And as long as they do this, the 49ers will be... Holding number 68, offense, first down. The 49ers will be more than happy to take these yardage. That stops your drive. It stops your momentum. J.T. Turner, the five-year man from Duke at right guard. Guilty of holding on the last play. No wonder that was such a good hole for Forte. Second and 12. Well, Scott Bruner under the gun again. The youngster from Delaware playing for the injured Phil Sims. Carpenter. Good hole off tackle left, and Carpenter picks up the first down yardage. Good block and good run. And it was number 52, Bobby Leopold, making the tackle. But the Giants got the first down right back. The Carpenter goes outside. C-74, Fred Dean, he cannot get off of his block. That's his area. He has to get off that block of Jeff Weston. Weston's doing a good job on, uh, uh, on the Fred Dean today. All right, so the first down is at the 39-yard line as Dean goes out and the run defense comes back on the field for the 49ers. Carpenter, the lone running back, three wide receivers in for the Giants. Bruner pumps once and then goes to the short man, Carpenter, but right there to cover was Jack Hacksaw Reynolds and a gain of only about three. Here's Haxel. Look at that little crouch he gets down into. That's so he can he can come up in force if he has to. But then he goes back into his coverage and makes everything happen in front of him. That's a good job by Jack Reynolds. You don't want anybody to get behind him. He keeps everything in front of him. There he is. 34-year-old Jack Reynolds. They gave him a birthday party last week in the locker room after the victory over the Rams. Carpenter again, the Lord running back. On second and seven, he has the ball. And he is wrapped up by Keena Turner. Another flag is down. There was daylight outside. Carpenter took it out there, and suddenly Turner materialized and held him to a gain of about a yard. Tim, and the infraction again against New York, Fred. You're, yeah, you're right. It's, uh, it's tough enough, like I say, trying to get the ball in the end zone, but, gee, they're just beating themselves. I don't know if they're mentally not ready to come out for the second half or what. they got to start playing better. The options being discussed with the 49ers. Illegal motion, number 81, offense, declined. Turn down. Tom Mullody, the tight end, illegally in motion, declined by the 49ers, third down from the 30-yard line. Out goes Shirk and Mullody. That means they've got three wide receivers in again. Gray, Greedy. Now they go with two running backs. Forte and Carpenter. Bruner. For Gray. Intercepted. Yes, inbound. Carlton Williamson. Another tip. Gray with the ball high. Tried to pull it in with one hand. Williamson ranging behind the coverage. Picked off the deflection just inbound. You got two, you got a slot to the right. One guy goes in motion and gets upfield. He gets stopped at the line of scrimmage, and the other deep guy goes up for the ball and bats it back over into Carlton. That's a great job by Carlton being in the right position. Well, this Giants turnover comes on a good effort by Ernest Gray. He goes up trying to bank a one-hander on a high pass, but the ball goes right to Williamson. Now, does he have the ball? There's one step coming down. I don't think he made that ball in, made that catch in bounds. Freddie, you thought he dragged I, his foot. I thought he did. I thought he dragged his right foot. I think he did get in bounds. Well, 49ers have the ball. And it's over the five-yard line for a gain of just about a yard by Johnny Davis. And on the hit was Lawrence Taylor, number 56, along with Gary Jeter, number 70. Now watch his right foot after he gets the ball. He gets the ball there. Now his left foot goes down, and watch his right foot. See it scuff right there, right in front of Gray. That's a good job by the official. It's a good job by the official. Official was right on the play, and the 49ers have possession, second and eight. Johnny Davis again out the right side. And uh, on the bottom of that pile up, Bill Neal. The Giants have now turned it over four times. The 49ers yet to give it up. It is third down and five. 
The Giants had the ball moving after the short punt by Miller gave them good field position. But it was Williamson coming up with a big intercept. Joe Montana. What a job he has done. The extra from Notre Dame. Tim, if you're a giant defender, you're keeping your eyes peeled to who comes into the game. Montana having to use up a timeout here because he was uncertain about the play call. They're usually signaled in by Guy Benjamin, but Montana had to take the timeout. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer, 6.46 to go, third period. Third down and five for the 49ers, bottled up at their own nine-yard line. Following the interception by Williamson, the offense of San Francisco trying to get it out from deep in their own end. Wide open, Freddie Solomon. Solomon breaks one tackle and has a first down out at the 35-yard line. Beasley Reese pulled him down, but Solomon was all alone in the ball arrived. 25 yard game. Now here's Joe has a lot of patience and a lot of protection and waits for the defense to set up into their defense and watches Freddie go to the open area. Solomon is a big play guy and they got to get the ball to him. They think they can score deep on the Giants. Solomon has now caught at least one pass in 30 consecutive games. That's a tough record for the 49ers. Play action Montana rolling out on loads for Cooper. But Harry Carson is right there along with Byron Hunt to stop him at the 40-yard line. Gain of about six yards for San Francisco. You know, Tim, he had, uh, uh, Freddie has a sore foot. I, I have to think that this turf in his situation would be good for his heel. It takes away the shot. It is a soft field, as we have pointed out throughout the telecast. 49ers, by the way, Fred, are now 8 of 16 third down conversions, and uh, that's a very good sign. Cooper. Kelly in pursuit, hauls him down. Cooper stretching for the first down yardage, and it appears it'll be a little bit short, but it will be just third down and about a length of the football to go. Montana, 19 of 29, 158 yards. He has run for one of the two 49er touchdowns. 5-11 remaining here in this third quarter. Shadows now almost completely covering the field here at Candlestick Park. It has been a perfect afternoon for football in San Francisco. Ray Perkins shielding his eyes against the last of that sun. Third down. Giants keeping themselves in this with some good defensive work, but their offense unable to move it. Seattle now way out in front of Oakland, 24 to 5. Davis and Bill Ring are now the running backs on short yardage, third and just a little bit. Good effort by the Giants defensive line. I don't think he got it. Johnny Davis. Lawrence Taylor came in from his right linebacking spot and at the bottom of the pile a real action came from Gary Jeter just getting up and Curtis McGriff number 76. You know Tim you really need a lot of good footing to get short tough yards like that. I just don't think that the footing here I don't think the footing down here for the lineman is good enough for a wedge play like that. It's just, it's very difficult. They're very capable under normal circumstances, but the field is not under normal circumstances. So the Giants force the punt. Good defensive work, and it is Miller standing at his 29. Deep for the Giants, Leon Bright with the 12. Another short punt for Miller. Fielded by Terry Jackson. Hit immediately. And a little minor scuffle as they get up. It was Bill Ring down on the tackle, number 30. And the Giants will start from their own 35-yard line. Next week on CBS Sports Saturday, Gil Clancy, Angelo Dundee, and I will be in Las Vegas for the WBA Lightweight Championship. Claude Noel defending against ninth-ranked Arturo Frias right after the Kentucky-Ohio State NCAA basketball game. What a day. Okay, first down for the Giants from their 24-yard line. Allow me to correct that. 
Scott Turner at quarterback, one running back at Carpenter. Carpenter trying right tackle, hit by Stuckey and Harper after a gain of about three yards. Carpenter held a minus four in the first half on just five carries. They're getting a little more action here in the second half. Second down and six to go. The Giants fell at 14 to three. We have 3.57 to go third period. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer at Candlestick Park. Quality in motion behind the ball. Bruner has the time, and it's incomplete. Intended for Mike Creedy. Third down. Now the 49ers send in four replacements. Fred Dean comes in. Ford. Lynn Thomas. Tim, so far, so far, the, the Giants have not had their way. Not only they're losing on the board, but their game plan is not going the way that they wanted it to. Briscoe has been in the nickel a lot today, and Fred Dean's been on the field. They don't want Fred Dean or the nickel on that field. Mark formation left. Forte and Carpenter, the running back. Bruner. Sideliner completes the treaty, but short of the first down. Now let's see where they mark it. No, he may have it. Mike Freedy, a good effort after he caught the ball. Stretched out and got the first down for New York at the 35-yard line. Well, our other doubleheader game today, Atlanta and Houston. The Falcons are really opening it up. 31 to 13 in the third period. Carpenter and Forte in the eye for me. Forte. Off tackle left, pretty good running. It'll bring up second and about three for the Giants for an NFL Today report. Let's go to Brent in New York. Tim, here is that last Falcon touchdown. Bartkowski pulling out, goes to his fullback, William Andrews. Andrews takes a step, coughs it up, and Alfred Jackson recovers for the Falcon touchdown. And as you said now, they lead it 31 to 13. Back to you in San Francisco. Okay, Brent. We've got second and a long three for the Giants. Just over their own 40-yard line. A loose ball on the snap. Flags everywhere. And Bruner pulled back before the ball came up. Let's see what happened here, Fred. Full well, start offense. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness defense. Full start charge against the Giants, unnecessary roughness against the 49ers. 49ers probably questioning that, saying, hey, you know, that ball is still there, and the quarterback's gone. We're getting into the play. There's a great deal of, uh, of, of miscommunication here between the center and Bruner, and then all of a sudden, after the play is over with, the 49er comes in and throws Scott down on the ground. Looked like uh, Pillars was the man who put the hit on uh, Bruner, and it's a big break for the Giants. The ball advanced to the 44-yard line of San Francisco. Here's Jerry Markwright. We had a full start foul on the quarterback, a five yard penalty. The penalty is disregarded. We had a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense hitting the quarterback. The 15 yard penalty is enforced. First down. Now, see it again, Freddie. Now, first of all, you get a bad snap between the center and the quarterback. And now you hit and now you have a situation where you have uh, pillars. Where pillars coming in and pushing down. I don't agree with that call. I think pillars was within his rights to do that. But he had his head down and I'm not sure that he even knew if Bruner had the ball or not. Yes, good point. Tough break for the 49ers. Big break for the Giants. First down. Forte gets a big hole and has another Giants first down. Good blocking off the right side by Turner and King. This is a simple trap play. Jack Reynolds stuffing up the lead blocker, but then the, the running back does a real good job here. Does an excellent job of finding the hole, the real hole outside the block on Reynolds. He gets up the field on it. You know, the 49ers have to have the leadership now to pull themselves together. They've had a bad blow go against them here, and they've now got to start 
playing some football defensively. 33 yard line of San Francisco in the pro set. The Giants trailing 14 to 3. Have something going. Bruner incomplete. Intended for Carpenter. Reynolds deep on the coverage with the safety man Hicks. And the other safety Williamson. But Bruner did not get the ball to Carpenter. Second and ten. Now four substitutions come on for the 49ers. Leopold, Dean, Thomas, and Dwayne Board as they expect pass here. They get Dean into the game and the nickel back. Kellett and Martin has been the number five back for much of the season, but Lynn Thomas getting that work today. Second and ten. Pillars in right on the quarterback. Flags everywhere. And once more, it'll be a false start, one would think. And there's Bruner talking it over with Jim Flack. And why this didn't occur in the first half is somewhat of a mystery. Yeah, why now, I guess, is the mystery since they seem to be clicking well together in the first half. Flack, remember, pulled out of retirement to replace the injured Ernie Hughes. And Bruner in for Sims. False start, number 12, offense. Second down. You're getting a lot of misunderstanding between the center. The center doesn't know if it's, if it's snapped on uh, two or three. There's, there's a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding between those two people. It's really surprising. Second and 15. Forte goes in motion, leaving Carpenter. Carpenter has it. Block from Forte. Carpenter gets back over the original line of scrimmage for a gain of about six yards. It'll be third down and nine. Well, they must be changing their cadence in some way because we didn't see this happen to the Giants in the first half. So they're doing something differently, and it's just not working. We've had two costly penalties, and the first one uh, turned out not to be costly only because of the questionable call against Pillars. Pillars was right there again this time. They didn't call it on. You know, it could be just a simple matter of the fact that somebody's not listening. Well, that's a universal problem. It? it sure is. Third down and nine. Mullity in motion behind the ball. Bruner complete. Carpenter. Carpenter breaks the tackle and gets it over the 10-yard line. But a flag is down again. Now, let's see who this one is against. Good play by Bruner and Carpenter there. A 22-yard gain. Bruner was right on the money with that one. Holding. Number 42, defense, decline, first down. Ronnie Lutt is called with defensive holding. And watch Scott Bruner's head. Look at his head. He's looking right toward his receiver all the way. And all he does is wait for uh, Carpenter to get into the open. The rest of it's all Rob Carpenter. Well, Carpenter held a minus four yards rushing in the first half. has been the best giant offense here in the third period with 47 seconds remaining. They're inside the 10-yard line, and it's 14 to 3 San Francisco. Leon Perry is now in it, running back with Carpenter. Slot formation left. Forte. Ike Forte was in with Perry. Perry replaced Carpenter on the last play. And he got Forte got to the six-yard line, where it will be second. And goal just inside the six. 23 seconds in ticking here near the end of the third period. Carpenter is back in. 4K 35 is with him. Slot formation left. Perkins in the slot. Perkins in motion. Carpenter. Carpenter works his way to the two-yard line before he's turned back. Pillar, number 65, and Kugler, number 77, as the gun sounds. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The 49ers 14, the New York Giants 3. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by... Ford and your Ford dealer who invite you to test drive the 1982 Ford cars and trucks. Atari. And by today's Army. 
join the people who join the Army. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer, where the Giants at Candlestick Park are knocking on the door at the three-yard line. It is third and goal. They trail 14 to three. We are just beginning the fourth period. Forte and Carpenter. The Giants have rolled 73 yards on this drive. They need three more to get into pay dirt in 49er goal country. Carpenter diving and gets away from the tackle. Score! Touchdown! Rob Carpenter just bounced off the pile and spun off all by himself into the end zone. So the New York Giants have now turned this into a football game. It's a good job by Rob Carpenter. After he realizes he can't make it over the top, he knows he has to come back down on his feet, and when he does, he spins off and comes to the outside. The Giants also offensive line beat the 49ers off the ball. That helps when you get down here this close. 76-yard drive, a three-yard touchdown run by Carpenter. The Giants, by the way, Fred, now have 218 yards of offense against 213 for the 49ers, who still hold the lead. Danello's point after is good. And so the Giants, who have suffered from turnovers today, find themselves now just four points down early in the... CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer who invite you to test drive the 1982 Ford cars and trucks. Atari. And by today's Army. Join the people who join the Army. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer, where the Giants at Candlestick Park are knocking on the door at the three-yard line. It is third and goal. They trail 14 to three. We are just beginning the fourth period. Forte and Carpenter. The Giants have rolled 73 yards on this drive. They need three more to get into pay dirt in 49er goal country. Carpenter diving and gets away from the tackle. Score! Touchdown! Rob Carpenter just bounced off the pile and spun off all by himself into the end zone. So the New York Giants have now turned this into a football game. It's a good job by Rob Carpenter. After he realizes he can't make it over the top, he knows he has to come back down on his feet, and when he does, he spins off and comes to the outside. The Giants also offensive line beat the 49ers off the ball. That helps when you get down here this close. 76-yard drive, a three-yard touchdown run by Carpenter. The Giants, by the way, Fred, now have 218 yards of offense against 213 for the 49ers, who still hold the lead. Danello's point after is good. And so the Giants, who have suffered from turnovers today, find themselves now just four points down early in the fourth quarter. The 49ers 14, the Giants 10. Tim Ryan and Fred Dreyer back here in San Francisco where the Giants have scored to close it up to 14 to 10. Joe Danella will kick it off. Amos Lawrence, the deep man, right at the goal line. Make it Bill Ring, number 30. And Ring over the 20-yard line to the 23 where he's stopped by Joe McLaughlin, number 52, reserve linebacker. And there's the scoring drive. You know, that's real good to see for the, if you're a Giant fan because... You know, it's, it's something else to hog the ball for 427, but you want to get seven points out of it. The Giants, that was a good drive, the best drive of the whole day. They're back in the game. All right, so the 49ers will start first down from their own 23. Hofer is in at running back along with Johnny Davis. Montana throwing on first down. Swings it out to Davis. He is hit immediately by Byron Hunt. And Hunt, the rookie, has been doing a solid job for Brad Van Pelt, who left early in the second period with a groin injury. Uh, Hunt has not been hurt at all out there. Well, he's been mostly a special teams player for him, but Hunt has a lot, a lot of potential. He's from SMU, he's a rookie. He's got a real good group of people to learn from, and, and they like him very, very much. Yes, they do. He was a 12th round pick, and uh, he's been a very pleasant surprise. Martin comes in for McGriff. 
And what they expect to be a passing down, second and 12, a loss of two in the last play. Montana play action. Flares it out. He's got Hofer open. Harry Carson runs him down along with Beasley Reese. But the 49ers come up with a first down play. That's the type of thing that we've been talking about. If Paul Hofer's not going to get the ball on the ground, a simple little play fake to, to draw the linebackers in and then yet throw the ball to Paul outside. He can do everything for the 49ers. He's just a great competitor. First down at the San Francisco 36-yard line. 13.58 remaining regulation time. Hofer and Davis, the running back. Play action again. Montana intended for Freddie Solomon, who's limping over there in the area of the 49er bench to try and make the catch. These 49ers have got a number of guys playing hurt. You mentioned Hofer and Solomon. Fred Dean playing with a bruised sternum. What? Walt Easley just unable to go at all with a knee injury. Johnny Davis is bothered by a, a calf. Kept him out of three games earlier in the season. Randy Cross playing with a hip pointer. At that time of year, especially when you're going for a division title, got to play a little hurt, so they're out there. Second and ten. Hofer breaking tackles. Gets close to another first down. Good blocking on the left side of that line. Neal and Carson. This is they what they hit. want. Tim, this is exactly what they want to do. They want to control the ball with Paul Hofer. He hasn't practiced very much this week, but look at this. It's like he's been practicing and playing the whole year. Look at the leg drive. He's got hurt legs, and he's still out there taking a lot of abuse around his leg. That's a great, great guy right there. Bill Courier made the initial hit. We can see on the replay. The 29. Third and less than a yard. 49ers moving smartly out of their own end after the grand kickoff. If the Giants stack them up, they may be short. Davis, the ball carrier. See who gets up uh, off the bottom of that pile for the New York Giants. Ryan Kelly was there, so was Lawrence Taylor. And uh, they're going to need a measurement here, it appears. Tim, the 49ers are pretty confident they had it. Uh, Keith Vaughnhorst got up and pointed toward the bench and then said that they had, in fact, picked it up. I think they did get it. All right. 49ers, indeed, have another first down, and that brings the crowd alive here. 61,000 at Candlestick Park. The 49er faithful enjoying this football season and hoping that at the end of this one, they will have a division champion, their first since 1972. The Giants, of course, have other ideas with ample time remaining. Hofer is hit right at the line of scrimmage. A flag is down. Gary Jeter, Curtis McGriff. And the tackle for the New York Giants after a gain of about three yards. Let's see who the flag is against. It's being marked off against the 49ers, it appears. 12.55 remaining, regulation time. Holding number 71, offense, first down. Keith Bonhorst. Charged with holding. You know, Keith Vaughnhorst was a, was a tight end in college, so he knows uh, how to use those hands. Third round pick in 74 out of Minnesota, having his best year as a 49er. And with Randy Cross, gives them a lot of strength on the right side of the offensive line. Montana, lots of time, throws into the coverage, and the Giants stop that after a gain of no more than five or six yards. Kelly was there. White Clark made the catch. Kelly and Hunt combining on the tackle. It'll be second and about 15 yards still remaining for the first down. Well, you can see in the first half, the Giants with just three yards rushing have had 76 in the second half to finally get their game plan into operation. And they have shut down the 49er rush almost entirely. Montana's got Cooper wide open. Cooper to the Giants' 32-yard line. Tom Cool, Joe Montana, finding Cooper out of the backfield. Reese made the tackle. So what Joe does here, you can't see, but right across the street, see Charlie on 86? He pulls in the second, I mean, he pulls in the linebackers, which allows 
Cooper to get behind him and into the alleyway to make a good reception here. You're going to see an awful lot of uh, flood action. You're going to see an awful lot of passes to the halfback the second, the last quarter here. 26-yard gain, and the San Francisco 49ers on the march again. First down at the Giant 32. The former Notre Dame star Joe Montana doing his thing as he has all season. Flares out to Patton. Blockers in front of him. And Patton gets to the 25-yard line. Montana picking up fans all over the league, even down in Los Angeles against the arch-rival Rams. There was a banner down there that proclaimed, I'm a Montana fan. <laughs> <laughs> San Diego in front of Denver, 34 to 10 in the third quarter. Chuck Muncie has four touchdowns for the Chargers in that game, 18 on the season. Leading everybody in the NFL in that department. Talk about linebackers. Denver's got some linebackers. Ricky Patton. Got about a yard before he ran into George Martin. Brian Kelly. Make it Kelly. On that initial hit. McGriff is still in the defensive end. Number 76. It brings up third and less than a yard for the 49ers. We have 10-24 remaining. In regulation time with the ball now at the Giants 23. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer as the shadows have now completely covered the field in Candlestick Park. There it is, 337 local time. In motion is Mike Schumann, number 84. Montana rolling out. He's got Young and a big defensive play by Mark Haynes. Montana didn't quite get the ball far enough for Young and a good recovery by Haynes. That's an excellent defensive play. It shows he's got, he's thinking down here. Everybody has their coverages. Everybody goes to the man. It's great position by the defender. He's also a very disciplined guy to hold that position and be so close to the receiver without getting a penalty. The 49ers are going to go for it. Davis comes in. Eason Ramson comes in to make a double tight end situation. And 88, Freddie Solomon. It is fourth and about a half yard. Big Johnny Davis, fourth-year man from Alabama. For their first touchdown, and the heavy-duty man appears to have the first down. The Giants are saying that they've grabbed a loose ball, but there is no signal forthcoming from the officials to that effect. Johnny Davis, primarily a blocker, but he, he, what he did, he gets the ball deep in his own in his own backfield and then waits for the offensive line to make their charge and then cuts to his left off of the blocks and he does a good job he's a blocker so he knows how to run Harry Jeter Curtis McGriff were the men to stop him but not in time first down San Francisco on the Giants 22 yard line Schumann goes left he's in for Solomon White Park to the right Hofer and Davis the running back play action Hofer to the 10, to the seven yard line, picked up by Reese. A pretty play by San Francisco. It's a swap action play, what they call a fake into the line, and all he does is wait for Hofer to get in the open. And the rest is Paul Hofer. What an amazing season he has had, playing hurt all season long. Practicing rarely during the week. His third reception today for 36 yards. First and goal from the eight-yard line. Many of the 49ers faithful on their feet. Bill Ring, number 30, gets to about the five-yard line. Local boy from Belmont, California, down the peninsula from San Francisco at the Carlmont High. Picked up on waivers from Pittsburgh. Primarily a special teams player, but getting some action here offensively. Gain of two and a half. Second and goal near the five. Ring again. Ring forced out of bounds at the two-yard line. Beasley Reese took him out. And the Niners are on the doorstep once more. Tim, the 49ers spent not only 
six points, but they sent an NFC championship game right, right here. Look at this. He follows the blocking, and he does a good job of taking the dip and then coming back outside. The 49ers are sensing that they could be champions today. 14 to 10, they lead by four. 8.09 to go in the fourth quarter. Davis and Ring remain in the pro set. Bill Ring, and he is stuck. Breaking loose, but play is called dead as he tried to do what Carpenter did at the other end. But play had been whistled dead at the one-yard line. In the middle of that Giants defense led by the nose man, Neal. Now Wershing comes onto the field as the 49ers will take that three points and open a seven-point margin again if Wershing is successful. Wershing had his first try blocked by Byron Hunt back early in this football game and then missed one that hit the upright. Look at the turf here, look at the footing. He's trying to find at least one spot where he can put his, his left foot down. Watch his left foot. Play was whistled before the snap, and it may have been delay a game, and that is the signal against San Francisco. Actually, that won't hurt them much at all. He will get a little uh, smoother spot where he won't need a backhoe to uh, get the ball up. They may refuse this penalty. I wouldn't be surprised. There's a discussion with Jerry Markbright. The ball was at the one yard line. They went for the easy field goal for Wershing, but delay of game called against the 49ers. Delay of game, number 14, offense, fourth down. Well, he will get a little cleaner place to hit it from. This is the area of the baseball infield, which is why this end of the field is a little more uh, soft because it just that turf just hasn't settled in. But he's in a better patch now than he was a moment ago. And Wershing has it up and good. A 26-yard field goal for Ray Wershing with 7.17 remaining in regulation time. The 49ers lead it by a converted touchdown. Ray Wershing, who just kicked a 23-yard field goal to make it 17 to 10, will kick it off for the 49ers. 7-17 to go. The Giants down by seven. Beasley Reese from his four-yard line. Reese taken out by Eric Wright at the 26-yard line. Bill Ring is down on the field. He collided with Flowers, number 37, while going down on the kickoff coverage. And the trainers are out to attend to Bill Ring, who was a key instrument in that drive that led to the 49er field goal, making a couple of short runs inside the 10 and doing a good job. So we have a timeout on the field with 7.06 on the clock. The 49ers going for the title. The Giants trying to stave them off. An update, Houston. It has been a tough, frustrating season for the great Earl Campbell. But watch him bust this one. 18 yards, and because of a second effort, a touchdown, 31-20. Back to Tim Ryan and Fred Dreyer in San Francisco. Timmy? Okay, Brent, the score here is 17 to 10. Lots of time for the Giants to get back into it. 7.06 to go. They have the ball. First down at their own 27-yard line. Bill Ring assisted from the field. Apparently all right. High formation for the Giants. Scott Bruner at the controls. Hike Forte. Nowhere to go. Gain of about a yard. Pillars in number 75. John Hardy, rookie from Iowa, making the stop. Ray Perkins, knowing there is still time to get back to a tie here if they can get a touchdown on the scoreboard. The 49ers, as Fred Dreyer has pointed out, they can spell division title. They're first and 72, and they've got a tough defense anyway. Fred Dean comes in on the passing down, second and nine. Number 74, Fred Dean. Good job he's done. He's coming from the chart. left, Perkins right, Bruner will throw. Mullity cannot hold on, it's nearly intercepted. 
intercepted by Carlton Williamson, who has one already on a tip. Well, Fred Dean is going up against Jeff Weston. They've had a battle all day. Weston's had the better half of it. The ball is now thrown, and then now, at that point in time, Fred Dean has to now plant and get going toward the football. And there was a, almost a great play over there by Carlton Williams. He's been around the football not only all day, but all year. Carpenter and Forte, the running back. Third down and nine. Big play for the Giants here. Bruner. Incomplete for Freedy. Could not hold on against coverage from Williamson and Hicks. And the 49er faithful comes to its feet to acknowledge the defensive play of the 49ers. It is fourth down, Giants. Hicks goes back to receive the punt from Jennings. Six twelve to play, fourth quarter. Jennings, good punt. Hicks from the twenty-five. Big hit on him by Lawrence Taylor, showing his speed downfield on the punt unit. Forty-seven yard punt by Jennings. Fine tackle by Lawrence Taylor. Will return to Candlestick with the Niners leading 17 to 10. Today. 49er fever. The temperature is still going up here at Candlestick Park. The Giants try to get the ball back in a hurry now as the clock has become a factor. 6 4 to go. Hofer. Out the right tackle behind Fawn Horse and Cross. Met by Harry Carson. Gain of three. Tim, right now is a perfect example of a type of, of, of a type of effort that Paul Hofer can give you. You're sitting on a seven-point lead. You've got five and a half minutes left to play. Paul Hofer is a perfect type of guy you want in your backfield. If he can get uh, about four or five yards of pop here every time he carries the ball, the 49ers got it locked up. It is second and seven. Out to the left goes Schumann. Solomon has not been in the last two offensive series. Hofer bashes his way through for another three yards. Neal made the tackle along with Carson. Third down and three. Well, look at this game. Oakland has come back. Mark Wilson has hit three consecutive touchdown passes, and the Raiders have gone in front of Seattle 25 to 24. Third down for the 49ers. Montana looking for an open man. He's got him. Right front, wide open. And he is dropped at the 46 yard line, but it is another 49er first down. Beasley Reese made the hit. 14 yard gain. He was all alone. Joe looks over to his left and then thinks better of it and waits for Clark to get into the open area. Right behind the linebackers and right in front of the secondary. Red Dreyer with Tim Ryan here at Candlestick Park. Seven catches on the day for Dwight Clark. Clark goes out to the left. Human to the right. Oakland Davis the running back. Davis hit the line of scrimmage Byron Hunt and then Brian Kelly pulled him down after a gain of about two yards second and eight Giants need a big defensive play here in order to give their offense some working time we're down to 346 McGriff goes off Martin comes on the passing down for the Giants Brad Van Pelt, if you're wondering, if you joined us along the way, was hurt in the second period with a groin injury, not considered real serious, but enough to keep him out. But Byron Hunt's done a good job. Hofer. Hofer picks up about four more yards. It'll bring up third and three. Harry Carson and Kelly there on the tackle. You know, Paul Hofer, 
can do so many things for you. But the one thing he does, not only the physical things he does, but having him in the game, controlling the ball at this point in time of the game, he very seldom fumbles. It's difficult for you if you're a defensive player to try to get the ball away from Paul because he's very conscientious. Third and three, Davis and Hofer. Montana for Hofer and Carson is there. Kelly right behind him. And the Giants come up with a big defensive play there. On third and three, it turns into a sizable loss. Carson hurt himself on the hit, but he made a very big defensive play. Now, 2.30 remains. The Giants will get the ball back via the punt and will have what may be their last opportunity to force overtime. We've got a timeout on the field. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes. Archie Bunker's place one day at a time. Alice, the Jeffersons, and Trapper John, M.D., all coming up on CBS following our football telecast. I'd like to thank our statistician, Bert Cornell, and our spotter, Gary Croak, for an excellent job this afternoon. And as they attend to Harry Carson down there, the Giants get in some troops for the punt return unit. Leon Bright will be awaiting the punt from Jim Miller. 2.30 to play in this football game. Giants have three timeouts left. 49ers have two. Of course, you can expect the Giants will take advantage of the two-minute warning. And they simply have to move the football on this series. Two outstanding defensive teams who have done that job today. If you joined us along the way, it certainly has not been the Giants' defense that has been out to lunch today for the New York team. Two turnovers. Some fine defensive work by the 49ers really made the difference. Hicks picking off a deflected pass off Tom Mullody, taking it 54 yards to set up Johnny Davis's touchdown. Keena Turner recovering a fumble by Rob Carpenter, leading to Montana's 20-yard touchdown run. And then a pair of field goals, one for the Giants' Danello, one for the 49ers' Wershing. So we have not had an offensive touchdown scored, at least one that was directly attributable to the offense. 60 minutes, by the way, and all subsequent programming will be seen in their entirety following the conclusion of today's football telecast, except on the West Coast, where programs will be seen at their regularly scheduled time. All right, we're ready to resume play here with 2.30 on the clock. Miller is standing at his own 35-yard line with that bare foot probably getting a little bit chilly right about now. good one it lands at the three and goes into the end zone so the Giants will start from their 20 yard line Tim that's a big big kick 51 yard punt Fred so Miller did the job after a couple of short ones look at this Cincinnati over Cleveland today 41 to 21 the Bengals now have moved to a 10 and 3 mark and next Sunday, you will see them against the same San Francisco 49ers. And should they win, they will also be 10 and 3. Bill Walsh, a head coach of the Niners, was the head coach, uh, I should say, was the offensive coordinator. And the reason that, that, uh, that Kenny Anderson is, uh, has had such a great career, he's instilled an awful lot of the offensive properties in uh, Kenny Anderson, has carried that over into Joe Montana. So that's going to be a great, great football game this Could week. Could be. Fred and I will be there. You'll also see the Rams at the Giants, Minnesota, Chicago. The Eagles at Washington. Check your local listings for all of the games on CBS next Sunday afternoon. Bruner has lots of time for Perkins incomplete. The ball was there, but so was Eric Wright, the rookie from Pittsburgh. And he did the defensive job. Perkins unable to hold on. Second down. Now let's take this opportunity for another NFL Today report. Here's Brent in New York. Tim, the Oilers are making a late run at the Falcons. Gifford Nielsen in at quarterback will go three yards to Adger Armstrong, 31-27. The Oilers missed their first extra point of the game. It could be critical. Back to you in San Francisco. Wow, what a turnaround in that football game. Now here's Bruner on second down. For Gray, almost intercepted by Hicks. Ernest Gray, the intended receiver. Double coverage there from right 
and Hicks. And Hicks, who has one intercept today, nine on the season, nearly had himself another one. You know, Dwight Hicks, Tim, has been here for three years. He's been a good player, a steady player for those three years, and now he feels, and sort of the coaching staff, feel that he has enough good football players in the secondary around him to really bring out his talents. He's a, he's a heck of a safety and, and showed it right there. Third down with 2.09 on the clock. Clearly the Giants need a first down here. Gruner incomplete for Ernest Gray. Ray Perkins looks up at that clock trying to figure out, well, there's still time. We can get the ball right back. 2-0-4. But the Giants, unable to move it on that drive, will have to punt it away. The 49ers can feel it in their bones. So can the fans here. An NFC West title in their grasp. Dave Jennings in the punt. You know, Tim, it's interesting. they got two minutes left to go. They're trailing by seven. I, I, I would wonder why wouldn't you try to pick up the yardage? You only got about that 10 yards to go. Well, 204 is quite a bit of time with the timeouts remaining. They could get the ball back, Fred. Yeah. I think they got to punt it here. Their defense has done a good job today. Uh huh. You don't want to give it up down there if you don't make it. The ball rolls to the 30 to the 29 yard line of San Francisco. Pretty good punt by Jennings. And the 49ers will start from there. A 51-yarder by Jennings matching the last punch by Miller. And so the 49ers have 151 to try and use up and count that West Division title as their own. Another reminder that 60 minutes and all subsequent programming on CBS will be seen in its entirety following the conclusion of football, except on the West Coast, where the programs will be seen at their regularly scheduled time. Tim, right now, if you're a New York Giant football player, you better start thinking about going after the football, no matter who has it, receiver, running back, or Joe Montana. You've got to get the ball back for your offense. 151 on the clock. The 49ers lead at 17 to 10. Tim Ryan and Fred Dreyer as we watch the San Francisco 49ers try and use up that remaining time and win this NFC West Division title. It's available for them today. They each have two timeouts remaining. This is Hofer slashing off late tackle. And the Giants going for the ball, as you suggested. Curtis McGriff trying to pry it loose from Hofer, who wouldn't give it up. 144 remaining. One timeout is called by the Giants after a gain of close to four yards by Hofer. Second and six. Ray Perkins going over the strategy to they can get that football back. Hopefully come up with a tying score and force overtime. You know, Tim, San Francisco, I, I think, has met all of their pregame requirements as far as their game plan. They've used Hofer uh, uh, adequately. He's really helping them, although he's helping them later in the game rather than earlier in the game. They've ran the ball in the first half. They've gotten the football to all their halfbacks and their receivers. Freddie Solomon has played, although he has had an injury. So I think San Francisco is not only quite happy with being ahead, they're also quite happy with meeting all of their, their game plan requirements. Well, they've kind of acknowledged they're not much of a rushing team. They came in averaging 3.2 yards per rushing play, and they're at 3.1 for this football game. Leading rusher Hofer, 28 yards. But as you say, they've done all the other things that they know they can do. Hofer diving straight ahead, gets a couple. They'll bring up third and five. 135 on the clock. And ticking. Giants with one timeout remaining. Third. And it'll be closer to four yards to go as the clock ticks away. Giants have got to hold them here. They're going to have something. If they can, they'll have something left. Montana using up all he can. Hofer again. And he has stopped short. 
Now the Giants call timeout. 56 seconds on the clock. Carson made the stop and a key one indeed. And we'd like to thank these gentlemen this afternoon. Executive producer Terry O'Neill. Senior producer Charles H. Milton III. In today's game produced here at the site by Michael Burks and our director Tony Vernon. Outstanding technical crew. Along with Marion Wiggum, our associate producer, our field technical manager, Brooks Graham, field technical supervisor, Bill Sherbert. And a very hardworking group of people. Jay Fairman in the truck, audio by Andy Bass. Unfortunately, pleasant weather for our camera crew outside and our busy tape operators inside. 60 minutes, we'll follow football along with all subsequent programming. It will be seen in its entirety following the conclusion of the game except on the West Coast. The program should be seen at their regularly scheduled time. Miller into punt from the 24-yard line. Leon Bright loading it at the 20. Miller nearly slipped. But he gets a good kick away and a 49er bounce. Bright out of bounds at the 31-yard line with 46 seconds to play. Tim Miller did a great job of kicking away from the returner. That was a very good job by him. He didn't want to have the have the ball get into the returner's hands too soon before his coverage could come down and break down around him. Well, it's come down to this. For the Giants, who are still in the wild card hunt, they really needed a victory today. The 49ers on the verge of a West Division title have to shut down the Giants for the next 46 seconds. Carpenter and Forte are the running backs. Three wide receivers downfield intended for John Missler, tipped away by Keena Turner. John Missler, number 85, the rookie from Arizona State, the intended receiver, was behind Turner and open, but Turner did a good job to get his hand on the ball. Second down, 41 seconds remaining. Bruner now 12 of 32 for 149 yards. Gray out to the left. Perkins out to the right. Missler in the slot right. Carpenter and Forte in the wide throw set. Bruner flares it out to Carpenter. Makes a good catch. A flag is down. Lott forces Carpenter out of bounds. Holding is the call against the New York Giants. 35 seconds on the clock, and they'll be backed up. Well, you had a barn burner there. Atlanta over Houston, 31 to 27. We welcome that audience to Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Tim Ryan with Fred Dreyer. Morning, number 72 offense, second down. Gordon King has been charged with holding. The Giants are running out of time. 35 seconds remaining in regulation time, and they trail 17 to 10. As we see Ray Perkins hoping for a miracle here now, second and 20 from the 21-yard line of New York. Missler in the slot left. Perkins wide left, Ray right. Bruner the quarterback. Bruner forced out. Bruner desperately trying to get away, cannot do it. Fred Dean, number 74, number 79. Jim Stuckey combining to pull down Scott Bruner. The clock is ticking away. The Giants have no more timeouts. 22 seconds and counting. From the 12-yard line. Bruner in the end zone. Sideline to Perkins, out of bounds with nine seconds on the clock. Ronnie Lott knocked him out of bounds. At the conclusion of our telecast, we'll give you a quick scoring summary from Brent Mersberger in the NFL Today studios in New York. The ball at the 20-yard line and a good job by Bruner and Perkins to get the clock stopped. But they have a long way to go. The 49er faithful. 61,000 strong, almost all of them still here. They are on their feet, smelling the NFC West Division title, the first in this beautiful city of San Francisco Bay since 1972.
Tim, if you're a defensive lineman, if you're Fred Dean or Dwayne Boyd or Pillars or anybody, you're thinking about getting to that quarterback because the place is going to go crazy when you do. Three wide receivers out to the left side. A flag down, delay of game called against the New York Giants. Well, they'll be coming a little farther distance as they mark it off back to the 15-yard line. Tim, that really amazes Delay me. Delay of game, number 12, offense, fourth down. You know, you don't have that much time allotted to you. You only may have one play left to you. You can't really, uh, you can't really disregard that 30-second clock. You got to get up there and call your play. Well, it looks like they've got the Hail Mary set up here with that. Uh, Gray and Perkins and this are all out to the left side. You're going to flood that zone. Broner chucks it up and let's see who comes down with it. The 49ers. Another interception and that'll do it. The clock has ticked to zero and the San Francisco 49ers. Carlton Williamson with his second interception of the day ends this game with the 49ers, the new NFC. Western Division champions for 1981. And the crowd floods onto the field to congratulate their hero. 